Stop number two coming at you of the summer tour. Yep, this is where the table comes to you. Over the summer, I uh, decided to pack this thing up and go to places where uh, and, uh, where people live, relax, create, and see what makes them tick. And today we have a repeat offender. But before we get into all that, got a couple things I want to throw your way as I always do. Live Rishi. Uh, these guys make some awesome CBD products. And they've been a supporter of the show since the beginning. So a big shout out to these guys. And uh, been using them for a long time. So I can, it's easy to talk to you guys about this stuff. Jump on their uh, website, livereishi.com. Use a code word table. Get a great hookup. Uh, try out the Rishi rub. And if you uh, got some aches and pains, want to rub that stuff in. And a little hack that I do is, uh, like on my elbow, I'll rub it in and uh, put a brace on it. Get it all nice and warm a little bit. Woo! Next level stuff. Check it out. LiveRishi.com. Use the code word table. And uh, you're going to really appreciate the love we're throwing your way. The other thing, as always, would love for you to jump over to the YouTube channel, Walt's Kitchen Table. Uh, like, subscribe, and share. It helps the channel out a ton. And what I do, obviously, I put all the audio content out there. And um, also some video content that you're only going to see on YouTube. So jump over there under my smiling mug. Hit the subscribe button. Would love for you to do that. Now, on to the show. Welcome to Walt's Kitchen Table, where I feature captivating stories from fascinating people. Chuck from Jersey Girl Brewery is back at the table. Well, actually... I took the table to him, but we have just a ton of laughs, laughs, and I know you're going to just crack up on crazy things we talk about, and uh, we get to know some really great things about Chuck that make him tick. Some of the topics we talk about, uh, the story of how he got his supplies uh, shipped to him to build the brewery, hence the uh, uh, title picture on YouTube, and then... Uh, he was in a band. I was going to guess that he played the bass guitar, but no, even better. Wait till you hear what he plays. And then um, he's got a great passion for photography. Uh, talk about being famous, guns and shooting, movies, good and bad. Wait till you get a load of those, that conversation. Uh, other than that, let's get to it. <laughs> You know, what else, you know what else does that? That kills the beer. You can't drink it after that. Well, I was going to say Dawn dish soap. That's how they make the pitchers. Ooh. Is it really? Yep. Oh, I did not know that. Yep. The foam of the soap. No. The reaction of the, the, reaction of the uh, Dawn dish soap. Wow, I love this reverb. I know, right? It sounds really good. Ooh, wait, how about this one? Wow. How's that? I feel like we're in a chapel somewhere, like in a cathedral. <laughs> oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. do that again. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I was like, I was starting talking, I'm like, there's a reverb, wait a minute, I gotta look at my controls. Oh, they're chanting at the brewery today. <laughs> That's Far funny. from a church, dude, right? You ever been accused of being church a church? Church Jersey Girl Brewing. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. No, no, not at all. There was a bar... Um, Somebody was telling me about, I think it was up in Seattle. Okay. Or in that area. Mm -hmm. It was called, it was an actual old church. And they turned in a bar and that's what, they just called it the well, there's church. A, there's a place on uh, Lake Apecong. Okay. That was a church <clears throat> that is now a restaurant and a recording studio. So the recording that's studio is upstairs and the bar and the restaurant are downstairs and it's this really exclusive recording studio some really famous people have recorded there but it's a secret nobody really knows about it but every once in a while you'll go there to drink or have dinner and these guys will be recording upstairs in the studio and you can hear it i don't know if you can hear it but they come downstairs for beers and stuff like that right, yeah yeah man that's a that's a unique combination it is it's right it? on the lake it's right on the lake yeah that's like uh uh Pavinci's, Pavinci's, I think it is. I don't know. Yeah. Whoever came up with that. Let's build, let's it's have gorgeous. a bar and then put a recording studio upstairs. It's gorgeous. It's it's a church. So you, from the outside, it's got that that long kind of abbey look to it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's really Oh, nice. that's kind of neat. Stained glass and all that. <clears throat> Back in uh, Colorado Springs, mm -hmm. uh, I worked in a bar that was, it, well, a nightclub. Okay. More of a nightclub than a 
happy hour bar, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it was a church. Okay. And the same thing, you drove by it at night, and they lit it all up like a, it looked like a church on Christmas. Oh, must know? have looked nice. Yeah, it was. It was pretty. Yeah. Then you go inside, and then, what's that word? I was just weird. Iniquity. And <laughs> We'll just leave that at that. Yeah, there, 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 there was some. Oh well, speaking of recording, yeah, I just saw a post of yours. Mm -hmm. You were in a band. Oh yeah, I was in a band for ten years. Oh, uh, what kind of music? Uh, we started off doing a lot of cover songs, pop songs, sure. you know, early '90s stuff, and then um, we started writing our own music. And then by the end, the last five years, we were just touring, doing our own music, and we wrote. We wrote somewhere around 350 songs. and Damn. I bought a recording studio. I've got a, I still have it at home. I haven't set it up in a while. Uh, I've got a 24-track recording studio in the house. I've got wow. a ton of guitars and basses and keyboards. And What was your instrument? Um, keyboard. And okay. I sang. Did you have like long a bit flowing of hair and have the wind blowing on I did you? Have long, I had long hair for a while, and then I decided I just didn't want it anymore because I had, to, I had a career at the same time. Okay. So I learned if you've got long hair, people don't take you as seriously, you know, it, in the corporate world as you do if you're kind of yeah, nice, yeah. cleanly cut, and right, right, well manicured. Well, nowadays you can put it in a ponytail and put a suit jacket on, and yeah, and it looks you're cool. all good. It right? looks good. Today's uh, everybody's a little bit more forgiving today than they yeah, were back yeah, in the day. Sure. Yeah. Back then we had to wear suits and ties every day to work. Yeah. I mean, you didn't go to work with the kind of clothes you go to work with today. No, no, you, just, no. you wouldn't even think about it. No, you would never even think about leaving the house and going to work in anything but a suit. Yep, and they wouldn't lay in the door. Right. Yeah. yeah or try dress, to get dress codes and all that stuff. You'd sit yeah. there. Most uncomfortable time for working was wearing a suit to work every day. And then we started doing jeans. Remember Jean Friday? Oh, yeah. Casual Friday. Casual Friday. So you paid five bucks. It originally started at our what? company. Yeah. You had to pay for your casual Friday? It was a fundraiser. Okay. So we'd say, hey, listen, if you want to come in in jeans, put $5 in the kitty. All that money goes to a charity, and you can wear blue jeans on Friday. It was great. It was a nice little fundraiser. I felt like it was a good thing. Yeah, yeah. So it and cost that, you five bucks every week. It did. <laughs> How it long did you wear a suit? Ooh, um, pretty much my whole career. I never, I was never in one of those positions where I didn't have to wear a suit or I couldn't wear a suit. I think yeah, later, yeah. later in life, um, my last probably five years before coming into the brewery. I, it was a little bit more toned down, but it was business casual, we call it. So, so it was khakis and a button-down shirt. And a suit jacket. You, you or, carry a suit jacket with you if you had to right. throw it on for a meeting. You wore nice shoes. You know, you combed your hair, stuff like that. And you got out of that world, and now you're brewing beer. Now I brew beer. I wear T-shirts and shorts. And it's beautiful. I, I pretty much live in Jersey Girl clothing nowadays. Well, it's cheap for Well, not cheap. It's but. not cheap, but it's... <laughs> But it's everywhere I go, I'm doing something brewery related. So of course, yeah. I'm like a walking billboard. Yeah, but that's what that's your passion, right? I love it. It's How long have you been doing this? Five years. I quit my corporate job in October of 2014, and uh, no one knew you were going to come to the brewery. Yeah, yeah. I'd talked to Mike about it. Mike's your partner. Mike's my partner. Yeah, he and I talked about it. Um, probably right around the time where I was kind of making my exit. And the, the decision was, if I didn't, I'd have to move. It was one of those, if, you, if you're going to move up the ladder, you're going to have to move out of New Jersey and go where the corporate headquarters is and that stuff. And I just wasn't into you it. Want, you wanted to stick around New Jersey? I always have. I, I've had plenty of opportunities to move out of New Jersey in my careers. Right, I, right. It's just, you know, one. Th it was at <clears> first it was, you know, all our family is in New Jersey. And as a kid, I moved around. We talked about this last time. I moved all over the world when I was a kid growing up. Yep, yep. And I didn't want to put my kids through that. So, mm -hmm. you know, younger years, it was about, oh, let's stay around because you have your mom, your dad, my mom. Who knows how long they're going to be around for us. So let's not go anywhere yet. Then the kids came. Then it became, well, let's not leave now because, you know, we have the kids. The kids don't want to be away from their grandparents. You want the family to be together. So I turned down a lot of opportunities to move out of the country. You know, I, I think I turned down China, Sweden, Amsterdam, and then, you know, in the U.S. I just didn't want to move. Yeah, but it all worked out for the best, right? In the end, here we are. Right. Four, right. Yeah. Five years. Five, five years, years in the making. God. I know we touched hard on to it. Imagine <clears throat> hard, hard. Every day I wake up, I'm like, man, is it really? We just had our four year anniversary. It was April fifteenth. It's been four years. It's been four years. Open. 
That doesn't count. That's from 16 when we opened. Right. But then I had from 14 to 16 where it was building ramp, that, right? Ramp, building out, right? You right, gotta right. Order equipment, get everything leased, get all the equipment set up, get the bar set up, get all those details done, licensing, things like that. And it was a lot longer process back then. It took, God, it took us, we, we still filed by paper in triplicate to the government <laughs> for our application. So the binder is like two inches thick. It didn't have the, the blue paper in the middle. No, no, you couldn't get away with that. No, no, you, you had to fill out. No, I, I just did one binder and then photocopied it two times. But Oh, there you go. Yeah, it was easier that way. But the, the, the government wanted a couple of copies. I have to keep a copy here on site all the time. So if the ABC or federal government comes by, I have to Bye. take this book out. You know, show them I'm, the, I'm five legit. years old. Yeah, yeah it's five but I'm years legit. Old. I'm, I'm legit. legit. Yeah. I'm, well, going back, I know you just we were just touching on it. What do you call those things on the wall? Container tags, container locks. You're good. That's all right. Yeah. So container locks. So it's like the the shipment, like on a container where they have it, so nobody messes with it, right? Yeah. You ever see like like if you look at the port of Newark or any port picture there's right. big containers yep every container is sealed before it leaves the factory or as it leaves the factory the last thing they do is they load it up they close the doors and then somebody has to put one of these seals on it and they lock it up yeah but see those look like i didn't get a close look at them yet but they look like hard steel metal like a bolt i could never figure out how they put these together because they've got to fuse them some there's not an interlocking mechanism there, it's not like a key lock. It's a bar with two big yeah. heads on either side of it. But there's no twist mechanism. There's no way to... You think they just hammer it and it pops in and then it's solid? Could I, they do that? No. It's, well, it's solid steel. It's well, the solid thing that steel. got me w about those is everything you ever see on TV, it's like a little plastic tag or something. Yeah. You know, you don't see that no. when they're doing we like a movie. We have to cut those off. We have to cut those off with a... With a four inch grinder we, we, that's the only way to take them off you can't cut them off with the scissors i think what happens is I, i'm guessing that one side compresses so it's more like a tube and you put the tube on and then they put a tool on and compress it oh and it, and i bet it you it forms uh, the head on the other side i guess that's what they do i i should research it i should figure that out i could see okay now looking at it, i could see that where the thicker end stays out and the other side compresses Slide, slides in and they put a tool in to smush it so it's and they smush it yeah that's that good, would make sense is that a technical term smush it? smushing smush, smush it, it. Yeah, yeah you gotta smush it it's like my favorite <laughs> term of uh measurement it's a shitload <laughs> <laughs> how much you got shitload I got a okay shitload of that. <laughs> cool and those are for what your so those were the first seven so our equipment we ordered from china had it came in seven containers so it, we took um it took them uh, four days to deliver everything. So the way the process works is the, the, the container's offloaded in Newark, goes through inspection, then it goes on a truck. They bring two containers a day. They, they pull up to the back door, they lift up the back door, and they say, okay, I'll see you in an hour and a half. And they go and sit back in the truck. Yeah, yeah. The whole and, union thing, right? They well, can't touch anything? They don't touch anything. They just drive it to the door, and they open the back, and you know, like we open our door. And they don't touch anything. They can't touch anything. Right, right. So we had to take the locks off. So we had to cut the locks off because nobody had a bolt cutter. We couldn't figure out how to. <laughs> we didn't know they were going to be sealed like that. Yeah, <laughs> I had no right. idea. So, um, so we we found the grinder. We cut them off. Opened the door. We had an hour and a half to take everything in the container off the container, or else they charge you two hundred dollars an hour for every hour after that. And I bet you, if you went, would they say an hour and a half? Mm -hmm. If you went to ninety one minutes, it was probably two hundred bucks. It's another two hundred bucks. They don't. There's no prorated. <laughs> yeah, no, they yeah. don't prorate that. No, they just slap you with two hundred bucks. Holy! Did you did you always hit your ninety minutes? We did. Um, I was lucky that at the time, a lot of good friends, and every day, you know, I'd I'd reach out and I'd say, "Hey, we're offloading a container. Could you please come and help?" Right. And uh, I had this really good friend, Dimitri, who came by every day to help me offload containers. And he was kind of a whiz because we figured in our infinite, I figured in my infinite wisdom, I was just gonna put a forklift and some chains because these, these tanks come in on their side. So they're about 15 feet tall, but they're on their belly. So they're about eight feet wide and they're on a cradle. 
So I said, great, I'm just going to put the chain on the cradle. Drag it out. I'm drag a tank out. Well, I went to, we hooked the first one up. I went, I just threw the forklift in reverse. I didn't know how, how much weight, what it was. Yeah, yeah. Boy, I pulled that sucker back, the whole forklift just, and the I bent the whole cage down. I just bent the whole thing, and I didn't almost, even budge. almost dropped the first tank. Well, didn't know that we should have we should have looked before we started pulling. <laughs> we we wound up climbing through this little corner space. The corner space between the tank and the corner of the top of the is the only place you could fit through. There was like no room, so we sh- we sh- shimmied along the top, went down between the tanks. There were three tanks on a truck. They welded all of the frames once they loaded a a tank in they put the next one in they'd go in and weld all the pieces together so this thing was like this big ten thousand pound unit in the truck man on this frame so So when i went to pull it and now it ain't going going anywhere so you're telling me once they load one in load the second one in somebody crawled in there like you guys did with a welder welded all the steel frames together and it crawled back out so they wouldn't shift on the ocean you know you get it you kind of look back i look back and go totally get it totally get it man it's because you're you're shifting like this on the ocean you don't want these tanks bouncing around everywhere. yeah yeah well huh. so we learned that so we got in there again with the grinder and we cut cut and then we started backing out the forklift a little bit slower this time now that i <laughs> a little bit slower and we pulled them out and just as we got them out i i had bought these uh you ever see these car um you put them underneath the tires so you can push the car around. Yeah, like a tow truck driver will have them. Yeah, they're like these yep. little, and they can hold like a couple thousand pounds. Yeah, each. little dollies, yep. Exactly. So we put those under the frame. The first two bars that came out, we drop it onto that. Then we pull a little bit further. When we got to the back, we put the back two on. And then by the time we got it off the truck, it was just sitting on these wheels. You yeah. could, one person could just push his tank around, oh, disconnect it oh. from the forklift, and boom. We got really good at it. We got really good at it. And yeah. how many tanks do you have now? Um... I got a lot. Um, one, five, shitload. six. I was sh- <laughs> <laughs> See, I should have gone right to shitload. See, now that would have been comedic genius right yeah, there if I, I just said, I had a shitload. I got a shitload. Look in the back. I got a shitload. Uh, it, it's uh, 10, 14, 15, 16, <laughs> if you count all the brew houses and all the hot liquor tank, cold liquor tank. And you're, in your first load of tank, how many did you start with? Uh, four, five, six, uh, 12. Wow. So we've added, we've added two three we've added three since we've been open and we just added a canning line so yeah i was going to ask you about that i saw that yeah so the tank tanks tanks we've added two more 60 barrels so we added uh uh, eight thousand gallons of liquid it's thirty thousand pints of beer now is that specifically for the can line you knew you're coming with that we just needed that for expansion oh okay yeah we had some we had some things going um early on that kind of facilitated the need for some more tanks and we i'm glad we have them because thankfully everything's full we have every <laughs> every tank's full right now we're coming out of all this craziness and right, right. we can't brew fast enough to keep up with the demand because that's a good problem to have it is and it and isn't it isn't, right? it isn't it isn't because it, it it's one of those things that it requires a lot of cash you know because it's all cash out you got to buy grain you got to buy ingredients you got to buy labor you got to buy all this stuff and then down the road, after you know three to six weeks of fermentation and packaging, two months later, and then you start selling it and you start invoicing, and you make money. You got to have enough cash to carry you through. So that's that's the downside of it all. Is just nope. Hang on a second. Sorry. Are we talking? You're not recording. Yeah, I'm recording. Oh, okay. I know, man. Now you got me. Now you got me going to work, dude. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing this to do work. It's not that hard. <laughs> no, come on, man. <laughs> We used to no. do all our all our recording. We did it on a, a twenty four track board. It Oof. was all ADDA, so oh. we went from board into a computer, individual tracks, and then computer back in, and we did hand mix down. So it was all live mix down, which was great. Because how fun is that? Though, right? Feel for some about moving a slider. All this digital stuff nowadays when you right, record, right. and and you can record the slider move, and so so you sit you hit record. And, on the mouse, you just ride the slider up or ride it down. It's like, oh my god, really, dude? You can't move. Yeah, it when you finger. when the physical part of it, right? Oh, Something yeah. exciting. Something exciting about reaching over and turning the treble up a little bit halfway through the track on a on a guitar track. You know, just, right, right. Just to make it pop a little bit. Ah. So, did you stay around 
jersey and all that yeah with the band i did yeah we you didn't we, go around like the country or anything did no you? no we were new york city hoboken a lot of local bars uh the shore so what kind Stone of music uh I, so that's the post right that you were yeah, you played was, at the Sto- stone pony yeah it was we did a we did a bunch of shows at the stone pony yeah it was a great great place to play so rock and roll i imagine being at stone pony right yeah we did stone pony uh what was down there trade winds is down there we played there God, you know what is that still there or are you going back i'm going back <laughs> i'm going back we, uh, cb in new york city uh See? maxwell's uh hoboken um, some those were big places back then. Back in the day, those were like the places to play. Yeah, what was it? Uh, CB CBGB. Yeah. yeah, you played there, or you just went there? Yeah, we played. Nice. Long time ago, though. Somebody, uh, somebody just had a post. Uh, somebody made a miniature model of mm-hmm. the bathroom, the men's room at CBGB. <laughs> Did they really? <laughs> yeah, I'll have to find it and send it to Jesus you. Jesus <laughs> Christ! It was good. We weren't we weren't very good um, when we were there. I remember we we dragged all our equipment into New York City, and you know we were our own roadies. So you had to carry all your shit in. You had to yeah, carry yeah, the crap yeah. out. It's the thing I hated. I hated the most about it was going into this. Like, I just didn't want to go to the city to play. It wasn't that important to me to to mm. drag all my crap into New York City, and then you got to find parking. You can't find parking. No, you no. get out of there at like three in the morning because you're the band that goes on at two in the morning. Yep, yep. You know you're the last guy going on. Um, and it was fun. It's it's great, um, but it's not like today. Like nowadays, you, you got a camera. You take pictures of everything. Like that's one of the few pictures of us playing out that I have. Was the picture in front of the oh, really? pony? Yeah, we and we had a camera and it had film in it, and that's the only way we could capture it back then. Right, right. Um, you just weren't a big picture taker. I am. I'm a huge photographer. Oh, okay. I love photography. Oh yeah. Oh, my God, I didn't know that. Oh my God, I love photography. I've taken tens of thousands of pictures. I have a whole collection at home. Um, I do a lot of um, sports photography for the kids. Okay. Like I, I knew I knew early on that the kids were going to be in sports from like kindergarten through high school. Okay. So I started buying really good camera equipment. And I'd upgrade and upgrade and upgrade. So I've got a, I've got a Canon 5D Mark III at home that I shoot with. I've got a nice. 24-7, uh, t- uh, t- 24-70, 7200 and a 50 millimeter lens yeah the big like the big glass mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 1.2s they're gorgeous and, to shoot with do you uh you like action and sports the most or you got something else that you like take pictures if of if i had time i'd go do like birds i think birds are cool to try to shoot because there's a bit of a challenge there to try to capture that moment capture yeah. that motion and freeze it um i do a lot of landscape like sunsets mountains things like that just that is awesome things like that i just don't have any time anymore i wish yeah, I, yeah. I wish i did I, it's one of those it's one of those hobbies so so i've i've got a computer drive just full of pictures just all the kids the kids playing sports from when they were kids now my son's going to be a senior in high school he's he's going into his last year of football so i've got all the kids there's some 23 kids that he's graduating with in high school that have most most of them probably eighteen or so have played together since kindergarten. So the whole class is twenty three people. Uh, the the next year senior football is going to be twenty three to twenty five oh, kids. So that's the football team is twenty three. Yeah, there's not like the 50 whole graduate kids. Okay, no, uh, no, yeah, the whole school's what... like yeah, it's <laughs> few. Yeah, it's like a thousand kids or something like. That. Oh, okay, it's some okay. big number. I don't five hundred. I probably should know this. Yeah. I don't. No. No. What position does he play? He's a uh, tight end, and he's an outside Ooh. linebacker. Ooh, yeah. outside linebacker. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of fun. It's good. He um, he he was always a utility player. My older son, uh, my my younger guys, um, he's a linebacker. He's a middle linebacker. So, you know, my son grew. He he was center for a long time. So he would. He was a fast kid, so he could snap the ball and come up off the ball and grab a kid or two okay. on defense and stop him from coming through. So we were well protected in the middle. Right, right. Um, and it was it was great. He did that for probably three seasons. And then when he went to high school, he said, yeah, I don't want to be a center anymore. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> you're really good at that, son. You know, you, you know you're really good. It's like, nah, I want to do something. I want to be a receiver, be a tight end. All right. So yeah, he moved yeah. to tight end. Tight end. 
wasn't really wasn't really good with his hands. I mean, he, all through his youth, he wasn't good with his hands, and he just started um, working on it. He started putting some effort into it, and he's gotten good at it. Now awesome. he's going to be a senior, um, <clears throat> and but he, it's good because he's out as a tight end, so he can he could be a lineman too. He's used to right, being right. a lineman, so he can he'll stop you. He'll stop you cold in your tracks if if you yeah, try coming to, around. Yeah, you're not getting around. Right, right. Now and is then he, he's good on the outside because he's fast. For a big kid, he's fast. So you send him around the outside. He, he'll put a good blitz on the quarterback. He'll, right. he'll, he'll well, he got a good defensive end. That ain't going to happen. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I did. That was that what good, you did? Oh, yeah, it was a good time. Nice. In a city league. Nice. I never played for like a school or anything like that. What, what city? Oh, in Colorado Springs. Oh, Colorado Springs. Uh, um, Colorado. Now, you grew up your whole life in Colorado Springs. No, I grew up in uh, upstate New York, and when I was 19, I moved to Colorado. Oh, okay. So you were in high school in Colorado? Nope. For any period of time? Nope. I never went to any school in Colorado. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. I graduated in uh, Oneida, New York. Okay. Uh, and I don't then, even know where that is. Where, yeah, where you is know where... Uh, Oneida. It's... Not too far from where I grew up, about a 45-minute walk, there's a plaque probably about as big as this table Okay, that says it's the geographical center of the state. <laughs> it, is, <laughs> it is really? Yeah. So <laughs> I grew up in central New York. When I tell people I'm in central New York, you're no, legitimately. No, <laughs> legitimately. <laughs> Longitude right. and latitude will either. Is yeah, that, exactly. That's a word? Yeah. yeah. Um, you ever hear of a night of silversmith? No. So like pots and pans and silverware, you ever see like in, uh, I don't even know what stores would carry it anymore, but uh, NIDA, O-N-E-I-D-A. Okay. And it was a, uh, they had a big silver, a uh, oh. big factory that made okay. silverware and pots and pans and that kind of thing. Okay. So growing up, a ton of people worked in that. Okay. That uh, was like the big thing everybody did in the town. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah you're working on a farm, you did that, or there was a, a hood dairy. Okay. Uh, processing, you know. Okay. So, so you were in the middle of nowhere. No, it was, <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> with the, you were, when you say you worked at the dairy farm, the the pot plant, or the <laughs> if you have three career choices in life, you're in the middle, in of, the middle nowhere. of nowhere. Yeah, it's the the metropolis <laughs> of a night in New York, right? <laughs> uh, my dad worked for the city of Syracuse for over thirty years. Oh, okay. So it was about an what did he what did he do there? Bus driver. All right, all right. So he, uh, uh, for a lot of years, he drove bus on uh, Syracuse University. Okay. So he saw and hauled around like McNabb and all those guys. And uh, so he's got all- A little brush with fame there? Yeah, yeah. yeah nice. He's uh, He said all those guys were extremely polite and- Yeah, oh, that's cool. Treated him great and all yeah. that. You know, you like to hear that. You know, you don't like to hear that yeah, there's, people at that. You know what? That's the thing about- f popularity i don't know if it's fame or just aware and people aware of you you could be you could take it both ways right you could actually be humble about it right and be you know people come up to you and say like oh hey i know you i know you or you could be a real dick about it and be like oh. and you see those stars you know in, in hollywood like stay away from me get away from me i want my privacy right and right i get it to a point but you, you kind of yeah. go into it knowing you, right you know right you right know. you want to be brad pitt right so if you're brad pitt you have to understand no matter where you go somebody's going to recognize somebody's you. going to know you Somebody's right? going to recognize you. And they're going to want to talk to you. They're going to want to take your picture. So I can get that. That would get old yeah. after a while. But like you said, that's kind of what you got into. You got yourself into it. You put yourself up on a big 60-foot screen in a movie. Right. People are going to recognize you. Guess what? You're, You're going to have to deal with it a right, little bit. Right, right. Yeah, so I could, I can kind of see both ways of that. But I always thought fame would be good in a small circle of something. Mm -hmm. So... I like to play cards, right? Yeah. I so if I was a famous or a professional card player mm -hmm. here in or here in Jersey, I could go to the grocery store and not everybody's going to swarm you because they don't know. Right. Right. But then you could go to an event or a convention or some kind of series mm -hmm. and go there and feel that fame because now everybody knows you. Right. And everybody recognizes you. But in your daily life... That's not you're not affected by it. Right. So I always thought that would be a good balance. That's if you the could. right amount of fame, right. right? It's the right amount of fame that you can't. You can go someplace and get some privacy, right? Yeah, you, like, or you can live your daily life, right? People are going to drive you crazy. But if you go into that specific area 
Woo, you're like on that That's 60 you, foot screen, you right? Boost your ego up for a little while and, and then, then go home. And then go home, right? You go back to reality. <laughs> exactly. You know what? He's like, Whew. you do what? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. You degenerate. <laughs> <laughs> Next. You know why? I don't. Do you have a real job? Yeah, that's no. what you do, what do you for do fun? For a living? What, do you, what do you do for a living? Oh, that supports your life? Yeah. <laughs> that pays your bills. That pays, yeah, right? Man, that is not something Isn't I would Isn't that like want. a condescending statement, though? Oh, you do that? that? Oh, you do that for a living? Is that what you do? Don't you, don't you have a real job? <laughs> It's like You're, what? I'm not. They, I'm not good enough to be a card player. I can't. Right, I can't yeah, I've I talked can't. to some. I've talked to some that are do that full time. Oh yeah, that is not a full time job I'd want to have. I gotta imagine it's got a lot of ups and downs. The swings are. Yeah, I can imagine. But when, but when you swing, when that pendulum swings the other direction, right, and it's bad, how do you get out of it? Where do you? You don't just like go to the bank and go, hey. I need a loan for my business. <laughs> well, so I'm what a do you do? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a gambler and I need some money. What do you do for a living? Yeah, exactly. I don't have any money left. What do you do? I'm a professional gambler. Uh, mm, mm. Uh, mm. Do you have some collateral we can put <laughs> exactly. on Exactly. Is your dad or your wife wrong? Can sign for you? <laughs> <laughs> I can't right? imagine you get a loan for something like that. How do you build a lifestyle around that? You've got to, I guess you've always got to be putting money aside for that dry mm. moment. You know. Yeah, yeah, these guys, I mean, too, like the big guys like... Negrano and all those. I mean, they've been doing it for so long. Okay. And if you, you hear them talk and you hear them in interviews, they talk about money management and mm. and of course there's a ton of stuff that's not reported. Reported. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? They'll go and play some cash a, games that are a private game. You do a private game. Yeah, they do yeah. a private game and walk out with a couple million bucks if they win well. You know what I mean? That's not reported. Yeah. Put that you in know. a mattress somewhere. Yeah, good for them. I mean, if that's allowed, you know. I don't. Know. I think the tax man's going to frown upon that, but. Uh, yeah. And it's like that big. The, you just the, don't want to be caught. That's one of those things. I, it's a big secret. It's everybody knows it's a secret. Yeah. You know, one of it's those. It's a known secret. Known secret. Yeah, it's right, a known right. known secret. Yeah, I, I just don't want to. I, I never want to dodge that bullet. Like, I don't want to have somebody <laughs> knock at my door and go. I was just, uh, just going to say at any moment. Any moment. Mm, hello. Hello. <laughs> Uh, tax man. <laughs> Do I look like an IRS man? <laughs> yeah. Hey. I just. I'm gonna look under your I mattress. Don't, I don't want to live like I'm. I'm worried one day I'm gonna get busted. And, yeah. And yeah. I just. I'd rather pay. Pay my. Pay my way. And and just keep earning and pay my tax bill and sleep good at night. That's my thing. Sleep good, knowing nobody's gonna come knocking at my door. Right. I don't live that kind of lifestyle. I, no, me maybe neither. when I was younger, and I and I didn't have as much to lose. I didn't have as much at risk. Right, right. Took some chances. You Nowadays, didn't sleep with a gun under your pillow? No, that's in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> Put it under the pillow. Shoot my head off. <laughs> don't want that. <laughs> I don't want that kind of responsibility. <laughs> and shoot myself. I like that. Oh, it's in the closet. Anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I shoot. I'm a shooter. I don't, I'm proud of it. I love I love shooter. guns, yeah. I've got shooter. a closet full of them. Yeah, I don't have a closet. I have, I have two. I, have, mm -hmm. uh, I think we talked about it. I've got my grandfather's rifle. What kind of, what's, a, what's the rifle? It's a twenty two. Oh, okay. It's a twenty two. It was the first, uh, the first gun I shot when I was a kid. There's a picture. I've got a picture of my grandfather when I was probably about five years old. He took me out shooting, and that's the gun in the picture with my grandfather and I. Oh, okay, cool. So when he passed, gives you the gun. Gives me the gun. Right. So I've got that one. I I really, I probably haven't taken it out of the case in over twenty years, twenty five years probably. Yeah, mine mine probably got a little bit of rust on them. Yeah, I, need I don't to take, take care them. Of it. Yeah. yeah I don't. But I, my 357, I've got a Smith & Wesson 357. Nice. When I graduated from college, it was my gift to myself after I got my first job. Got my first job, got my first paycheck, got my first gun. Yeah, the first thing you bought? First thing I bought. Nickel plated or black? It, it's nickel. Is yeah. It? Yeah, yeah, I have, it's, I have it's a nickel really plated. Nice. It's, it's a revolver. I, uh, I shot competitively when I was in college. I've, I've, shot, yeah. I've been a shooter since I was five. I used to work at the Alamucci Boy Scout camp. When I was uh, twelve and thirteen. Now is that wait a minute? Is that in Jersey, Alamucci? Alamucci, yeah, it's two towns over. So it's Hackettstown, Alamucci. Okay, it's right over here. I, I never realized I'd spend so much time up in this area because when I went to scout camp, this was considered the boonies. I mean, you, and I, <laughs> I grew up in Morris Plains. I'm not that I'm not that far away. No, no. Now no. that I know geography in New Jersey and distances and by car, yeah, it's not that far away. But um, everything in Jersey is at least thirty minutes away. That's it. It's a Jersey commute. 30 Everything's minutes. thirty to forty minutes. Everything, everything. Um, but I used to. I when I was a kid, I taught the rifle range at the Boy Scout camp. So I'd go up every summer, and I'd spend the summer at camp, living on camp, 
going up, teaching kids uh, rifle safety and shooting, and then uh, went to college, shot competitively through college. With, I was rifle only, and handgun, or just it was rifle and handgun. Okay. It was all twenty two. Even the handgun was twenty two. Yep. Okay. Everything was. Uh, it was all um, ROTC guys, and then I was oh, the only nice. non ROTC guy <laughs> on the team. Um, and then, and then when I got out of college, um, I got my first job, and I said, you know what? I went to this place. It's a billiards place now. It was over on Forty Six in Denville. It's a pool hall now. Not a pool hall, but a pool supply, like a pool. Swimming pool. No, no, no. shooting pool. Okay. Like, like uh, table yep, games, yep, chairs, yep. and things like that. Man cave stuff. <laughs> um, they used to used to be a gun shop, and I bought my gun there. I went in, and it was four and a quarter, 425. Um, and I bought it. I got this beautiful case for it. I got, like, the nice soft rubber grip because it came with a wood. Really beautiful. I've got a really good wooden handle. Oh, okay. It just... No, tears your hand apart yeah, yeah, when of you course. shoot with it. Yeah. When you shoot it a lot, it's good if you're only going to use it once in a while. But if you're well, using that thing a lot, that yeah. wouldn't grip. No. No, no good. But it's a good it's a good gun. I've, so I've had it since 91. It's been my gun. My kids nice. both learned how to shoot on it. Um, it's been in the family. So I just keep it I keep it up in the closet in the case locked up. Yep, and, yep. and that's it. Yeah, I got the same nickel plated, same thing. It's, it's a great yep. gun. Uh, Very reliable. Yeah. Not the only thing I find is the only thing I find is the um, when I shoot I'll, I'll put like fifteen rounds through it and I've got to tighten you know when you you pop open the the mm -hmm. the chamber and you push the rod right yep. and the, the shells pop out that rod loosens, loosens up. it worsens, works its way out so mm -hmm. like halfway through shoot I got to tighten it back up which I find yeah. it, I find that to be annoying yeah Still, but after, simple stuff like that right right but other than that it's nice to when you pull the trigger it works. Shoot straight, in, straight yep. as an arrow. Yep. So I've been lightening the trigger on it over the years because I don't like a I don't like a firm like I don't I don't want to like pull really pull on it. I just want yeah, a yeah. nice gentle. I'll pull the 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 hammer back, right, and cock it. Then I'll line up my shot and then I take my shot. So speaking of that, my wife loves when I bring this movie up. Which one is that? Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man. <laughs> God, <laughs> that's the most obscure movie ever. <laughs> My, That's got the guy from the motorcycle accident. Um, motorcycle Ru accident. Uh, what's the guy? Um, so it's so you uh, got two. The guy from Miami Vice. Yes, uh, Don Johnson. Don Johnson is, Mar is Marlboro Man. Marlboro Man. And the other guy, uh, Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke was in a really bad motorcycle accident. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, his whole face got messed up. No, you know what that's from? His face getting messed up. Boxing. No, no, he got no, he got no motorcycle. Accident oh, okay. Or a car accident. He got some kind of accident. Oh, okay. Most of them up pretty good. Yeah, but a lot of the damage to his face is he tried boxing and they just they beat the crap out of him. Yeah, they tore did him they up. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so, don't you after the first beating? Don't you, you go, kind of go? Man, man. <laughs> you probably shouldn't lead with your <laughs> face. <I> <laughs> but there's a line in there because it's I t I say it's the best worst movie ever. It is. It it's is brutal. A, it is brutal. Brutal. But they have some one liners in there. That are amazing. And when you were talking about the trigger mm -hmm. and lighting up the trigger, there's a scene where Don Johnson gives Mickey Rourke a gun. Mm -hmm. And in the movie, Mickey Rourke can't hit a fucking a broadside of a barn. Right. right? Yeah. So he shoots this gun, and of course he misses everything. And he goes, man, it ain't your dick, Harley. You're not supposed to yank it. You just squeeze it. Squeeze <laughs> it. Squeeze it. Squeeze it. <laughs> So that's what we always said. Don't jerk the trigger. You got yeah. you got to squeeze the trigger. Yeah, yeah. He goes. He he said. Yeah. He goes. It ain't your dick. You don't yank it. You squeeze it. So. <laughs> that is the most obscure movie <laughs> reference ever. By the way. Thank you. Thank you. And it's that. And last, this is a great one. You ever see the movie Summer School? Holy cow! Remember well, that movie? Phew. So Going way back, back eighty seven. Right. That's 87. when it came out. Yeah. Holy 87. man. Eighty seven. It was on last night, and I was in. I was flipping through the channels. Angela and I were like getting ready to go to sleep. Is that Rodney Dangerfield? No. no, no, that's that's um, back to school. Back to this school. This is summer oh. school. This is a teacher. He's a gym teacher. He gets suckered into doing summer school with all these kids. Okay. And it's a story of how he changes their life for the better uh. because they're all they're all retards, but he makes them all better people <laughs> in the end and saves his job and he gets tenure. Anyway, 
it, it, it's hey, just spoiler got alert. So spoiler many, alert. I know, sorry. <laughs> In case anybody's going to watch that classic tomorrow. For- <laughs> hated to hated to kill that one for you. You've only had like four decades. Years. Four say. decades to watch it. I'm going to be the guy to ruin it for you. <laughs> Fucking Chuck, man. I had it. It was, was on my list. It was on my bucket list, man. That was in my DVR, dude. Now I'm just going to erase it. <laughs> Crappiest movie ever, but it's got so many. Like, it was a movie that I went to see when I was that old, and I just. I watched it probably three times. I remember, right, right. and it all just came back. All the lines came back to me, and <laughs> it, it just cracked me up. And then we got about halfway through it, and I looked over at Angela, and uh, she Angela's had that, your wife. Angela's my wife. Okay. Yeah, and she she had that that I'm tolerating this look on her face <laughs> because it makes you happy. And I said, "Honey, are we done?" She's like, "Well, you know, Chuck, if there's something else on to watch." <laughs> So play. <laughs> so she's like, just so, you know, if you want to keep watching it, great, but there's probably something better on. Why don't we take a look? <laughs> yeah. So I tried to show Val, my wife, mm-hmm. that movie, and we got about 15 minutes in, and she's just like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> so, you, you just feel, you, you feel your brain just going numb. Like oh, as a kid, you- as a kid, it's just stupid humor. It's just stupid, right, funny right, stuff. Right. But as you get older, it's just. Yeah, uh, you, yeah, that movie doesn't hold up. Your face just starts to droop, <laughs> and your mouth just opens, and a little puddle of drool yep. forms. Yeah, oh. well, you know how you know I have that movie poster <laughs> from summer school. No, which one? Harley Davidson and Marlboro Man. Oh, you don't? I do. Do you have it hanging? Does your wife let you hang it up? No. Okay. But when I get my podcast studio, that's where it goes. Yep, right next to Goodfellas. Nice. That's a good movie. That's a great movie. That's God, an that's amazing a classic. Movie. Yep. That's you, a class. So what? Do, what do I make you? What am I, a comedian? What do I? Oh, make you laugh? What do I make you oh, laugh? Oh, am I a clown? Yeah, oh, I, love so, that. Um, I thought this was. I watched. I was. This is back when we had cable, mm-hmm. right? Flipping through, and there was a lifetime achievement award they were given to uh, De Niro for that movie. Well, just or, for lifetime. Was, oh, okay. Gotcha. So at that point, they were giving him for everything he's done up to that point. Right. So him and Pesci are oh my God. super they're, they're good friends. Everything together, aren't they? Yeah, they're super good friends, right? And uh, so he gets up there. He calls him Bob, right? Gotcha. He goes, the first time apparently they ever worked together was in Goodfellas. Was it really? Apparently. Because I thought Casino was no, first. They did, no, they did Raging Bull together. Oh, I didn't know that. I think they did Raging Bull together. Oh, well, wait a minute. Now that, uh, didn't they? Didn't, wasn't Pesci in Raging Bull? It was the first movie they worked together where they killed somebody. Oh, well, that's a very specific, specific. thing. <laughs> <clears throat> so, you know, remember the scene? I don't know if it, where it was in the movie where there was like, they're all in a car. Mm-hmm. Uh, who's the... Who's in the... In Goodfellas? Yeah, who's the third guy, the the main dude? The Hall. Um I don't uh, the know guy that name. went into witness protection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. him and Pesci and De Niro are in the car. Yeah, right. And they're driving somewhere, and they're all quiet, right? And they're because they're just driving. And then you hear something in the trunk, so they pull the over. The, the guy in the trunk is alive, right? <laughs> He's not dead yet. He's not dead yet. So that scene where uh, Pesci is stabbing him. Yep. Right to kill him. Yep. So apparently, Pesci was telling the story. <clears throat> of that scene and he goes i stab him and the director's like oh man you got to make it more realistic you know this that and the other and i tried again didn't work tried again didn't work he goes bob come over and took the knife from me just went all ape shit on this guy stab me he goes hands the knife back he goes that's how you stab somebody <laughs> he goes i loved him immediately i'm like holy shit <laughs> and those guys are in everything together yeah, well, They're, he talks. Casino is a great movie with lo- them together. The only reason I don't have that movie poster mm-hmm. is because I like the original, getting the original movie oh, poster. Yeah, so okay. you gotta go like on eBay and find that. Sure. It's not a reprint. It's horrible. Oh, the, the poster itself. Yeah, I'm not a fan of it. The you know, artwork and stuff. I'm not a. I love that movie. So the what's the Casino? Thing? Yeah, Casino. I but I can't watch it. Because of the end, where the way Joe Pesci goes with his brother. Oh, down in the desert. Down Spoiler in the, alert. In the, yeah, in the cornfields and the still pit, alive, and, they, and they're hitting him with the bat. And I'm like, oh my god, I can't, <laughs> yeah. I can't watch it. It's like, um, like Saving Private Ryan. Oh, that first end, when the oh. guy gets stabbed 
in the the, the oh up by the, the German guy up the, like in the second story yeah, yeah, window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slowly, he's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's it. I can't. I, yeah, yeah. I can't take stuff. You got like by that. the first scene though. Oh, the the. The opening the scene. Beach? Oh my god! Oh my god! There's my a wife video a... game like that. What? One of the first video games that I played that was a first-person shooter. Um, oh my god! I know somebody's listening. Going, Chuck, it's this, it's this. Anyway, it became this uh, a Call of Duty. It was okay. a Call of Duty, and the the first scene was you're in, and it, it was th- one of those 3D game engines where you could look around and you, okay. you have all these okay. other characters living in the game with you. And you're you're living at 3D, so you're in the carrier going towards Normandy Beach. And then the gate opens, and you're getting gate shot. Gate open, at. game game on. Oh, that's where you start the game, Whew. and you got to take the beach, and it just goes from there. You it just goes. You got to get on the beach. You got to get behind these things. You got to shoot. You're shooting everything that moves. Yeah, yeah. Everything's blowing up around you, and when you stop and take shelter, you can actually look like 360 degrees. And, and see guys like coming up behind you. You still see guys coming up behind you. You see guys everywhere. You see the you know, you see bombs overhead. You see these like bullets whipping by you, people getting hit in the video game. Jeez. I'm like, this is amazing. And then I saw Saving Private Ryan, which came out after I think it came out afterwards. One of them, I just remember they were close of, together. They were close together. And I remember it was either, wow, this movie looks just like the video game, or I saw the video game. It was like, wow, the video game looks just like the movie. Right, right, right. It's like right. I live in the movie. But it's that whole scene of taking Normandy Beach, and you're, and it was, and, and then I just, I was hooked. I was hooked. And then yeah. it got a little crazy as the game series went on. It got, yeah, it got a little over the top, right? A little bit over the top. But, but that whole, uh, Val, my wife, hasn't seen that yet. Private Ryan? Yeah. Oh, that's a great movie. Super good movie. I think you know great. Vin Diesel's in that? Yeah. Yeah. He People, dies. He dies. He's the he, guy who gets shot quick. and they leave him in the road. Yeah, he's, he goes pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah, but. He goes quick, but he's he's laying there on the road. And they're like. Yeah, but that's a classic move, though. They were snipered. They yeah, snipered yeah, him. Yeah. 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 Classic. Go save your buddy so I can kill you, too. Exactly. I'm going to yeah, take you yeah, both yeah. out. Yeah. 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 Um, there were a lot of there were a lot of people in that movie. There's a lot of bit parts in the movie. Who's in? Ted Danson's in that movie. Yep. yep. I remember it's that. Like, holy. Have you seen uh, Midway? I have not. Oh, is it good? It's really good. Wow. Yeah, it's a little. I over saw the two. old, the old Midway. No, this one's good. Really? Uh, the same. I had the same that rush you get when you're watching Private Saving Private Ryan. Mm-hmm. You get that same rush in like two or three times in this movie. Wow. What they're doing? Wow. Because we left the. They're doing a lot of. It's, it was a lot of dive bombing. Dive bombing. Yeah, dive. They'd, they'd come down mm. and then they'd pull up and they'd drop the and bomb drop and hopefully hit. As long as they were pointing at the ship, they'd let the bomb just go and it would just. Yep. Continue, and then they got to pull up and they got to pull up at enough time. <clears throat> so there's there's a whole bunch of those scenes in it, okay. right? And then there's this one scene, uh, if you know the history of Doolittle, uh, where he was the first person to. Uh, him and his squadron were the first to go penetrate uh, Japan and China and actually bomb the homeland. Gotcha. Okay. I, and, I didn't and, know that. In World War II. Okay. I just watched it again. So. Okay. <clears throat> and of course. Now I got it, something to do tonight. Oh, it's a great when movie. When I go poolside, what, I'll, I'll what, pop it on the uh, iPad and watch it. What Awesome movie. Awesome. Okay. And it's on HBO. Okay. So if you got HBO. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, we were leaving the theater. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. <laughs> we were leaving the theater, and people are like, what'd you think of it? And I said, I go, man, the, o- the only problem I got is those guys that flew those planes, I have no idea how they fit in the cockpit. Because they were so small? Well, Tight? no, because so, you know, no, the size of the fucking balls on them. <laughs> Dude, can you imagine oh, what no. it would take? Okay, I'm gonna get in this plane, dive bomb from five thousand feet to eighteen hundred feet. I just watched it, so that's why. Yeah. While I'm getting shot at, hopefully my plane doesn't blow up. I drop this five hundred pound bomb on the deck of this aircraft carrier, and pull up, and hopefully pull up in time. I don't crash into the ocean. The whole time I'm getting shot at. Yeah. And it's and they're and they're like just pointing at you because you're not moving. Well, it's all fodder. When you, hit, when you start coming down, you're coming down straight. That's it. So you're just basically a, a, they're they're just aiming at you. Well, the only thing spot in the sky. The only kind of 
silver lining around that. It's not like nowadays where they can lock on and shoot you. Mm-hmm. It they was just all spray. It was right spray and but pray. still spray and come pray. on, man. And that's why they're like, that's why we need 12 bombers to go after one aircraft carrier. Hopefully one bombs it. It's like, yeah. holy shit. Did you see 1917? Uh, I was not a fan, dude. I, I thought Did you the see cinematography it? was okay, that's phenomenal. The only, phenomenal. That, the, way they, the way they tracked that movie, it just never, never there stopped. There were a couple of breaks. I, there were a couple that I could identify where they were truly like, okay, they put a cloud of fog. So now, okay, that's a break. Right, right, but right. you could hardly tell where they stopped filming and they mm-hmm. started filming again. I thought that was impressive. The storyline and all that. I just by the end of the movie, I just went, eh. Okay. I, I think they focused a lot on the cinematography, a little bit less on. They should have put more into the story. Story. Yeah, but I thought it was well done. But I'm 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 always a big fan of like World War One, World War Two. You look at what people did at that point in in life, right? To to protect or. Defend, so, oh, defend well, protect, yeah, no. whatever end you're on, the that they did, like dropping from five thousand eighteen hundred, drop a bomb, pull out while you're getting shot at, <laughs> or open a gate and run towards the beach and fall in the water, or right. sit in the woods when it's you know sub zero during winter time, trying to wait through the the battle of the uh, what was that the battle of the, the bulge. bulge. But like in World it's, War One, how about the the horror stories you hear about living in the trenches and. The dead zone in between, because the you, gases and the yeah. and all the 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 bad. I mean, yeah, it's war, and then they that's when they came up with the rules for war. They're like, okay, you can kill each other, but you can't do it by gas <laughs> yeah. that's or just, a fifty that's millimeter. Horrible. Yeah, yeah. or <laughs> fifty millimeter. You just can't. You can't You're not supposed to shoot in. people with a fifty millimeter. Right. I mean, I I get it, um, but I, it's just. And you think of Vietnam, you think about Korea, you think about all these wars that people really gone out and you think about Iraq you think about people who've put their life on the line and I think that's why every time we get one of these like Memorial Days comes up or the 4th of July or something like that yeah yeah it's what makes me most proud you know yeah same here the fact that that I know that I've got what I've got and because somebody before me like my grandfather and stormed the beach or flew that plane yeah right put put their life on the line so i can have my stupid opinions nowadays whatever <laughs> yeah, whatever you know, those whatever are whatever my opinion Oof. yeah but it, it's That's a whole me, other conversation yeah but it you know it's uh it's nice to live under that umbrella of liberty that that somebody else provided for me you go back to the revolutionary war you go back to the civil war you go back to all the wars that these guys fought you will never see a war like that again i don't think. No, I, not that kind of scale not that kind of okay. conventional scale where you know i i think <clears> it's a different kind of war but um, that imagine you know you're a kid, and you're like it, okay you're gonna you sign up to go. It's put seventeen yourself in years old. Pearl Harbor. Yeah, everybody sees Pearl Harbor. They go, that's it. I'm gonna go <clears throat> fight for America. I'm gonna go go to Germany. I'm gonna go kill the Germans. You know, it's it's an it's an amazing. Well, the same thing happened in nine eleven. When nine eleven hit, the volunteer rate the skyrocketed guys, absolutely yep. you look at the guys that went into world trade right after that happened and exposed themselves to all that stuff to to try to find survivors hopefully yeah and then everybody that signed up for the military to do just that kind of like pearl harbor mm-hmm. that happened it, it, okay, it, it incentivizes no. people i get yeah. it but yeah it takes a, i think it takes a very special person to say i'm gonna go commit my life to protecting a country so That's, we can sit here and do this. So we can sit here and do a podcast and talk yep. about goofy shit like Marlboro Man. And <laughs> <laughs> it's not goofy, man. <laughs> and Stop it's, picking on it. Sorry, Stop not that on. movie. Not that movie. We'll pick on another you movie. You triggered me, dude. Well, summer, <laughs> summer, summer camp. Summer, summer, now, summer who, who was in that? Summer school. Summer school. Mark. Uh, I don't remember that movie. The girl from Cheers. The second girl from Cheers. No, not the blonde, the brunette. Um, she was in Star Trek. Oh my God, Christy Alley it wasn't John. Not no, Christy Alley. John Candy was in. Uh, John Candy was not in that movie. John Candy was in uh, Great Outdoors. Great is Outdoors what I'm was great. Oh, so classic. Have you ever seen Uncle John Buck. Belushi's? Have you ever seen John Belushi's last movie? <laughs> no, which one was that? Oh, it was. He was. A I was reporter. never a big. I was never a big John Belushi fan. Yeah, he did a he did a movie. God, what was it called? Uh, great Divide. Um, anyway, he was a New York City reporter. He had to go out in the mountains, and he was doing a story, and he went from this really hard-ass kind of reporter to kind of a soft, 
fell okay. in love and all this stuff. It was a great story. And it, I always look back at it. It's like the one movie that nobody <clears throat> ever talks about that John Belushi did, but it's just a great movie. Good movie. It's just a great movie. Um, he did a really good job. Because you always think of John Belushi as like this comedic goof. You well, know? you always go right to Blues Brothers and all Blues that, Blues Brothers, right? Animal House, you know, yeah. 1941. You know, he always played this character that was kind of goofy. Yeah, yeah. Right? But, uh, yeah, The Great Divide, I think it is. God, it's – or something like that. It's well, there's a movie. there's uh, some things I want to tell you about uh, Midway, but you got to watch it. It's such I'm going to watch – hey, listen, I know the story. <laughs> no, but there's – There's no spoiler yeah, yeah. alert here. I, I know hey, how it turns so, out. <laughs> <laughs> No, okay, but there's no, some things. There's some uh, commentary and some drama in there. Okay, you're just when it happens, you're just like, oh my god, that's amazing. Really? Yeah, on both sides, on the Japanese side and on the American side. Gotcha. Some things that, of course, it's a movie. Yeah. So you got to take whoever the director or whoever was. It's their view, right? It's their point mm -hmm. of view. Of course, it's historically. Well, driven. It's historically driven, but right. may or may not be accurate based on true situation right there's some there's some things some embellishment yeah yeah and i don't know if it's embellished or not probably a little bit because mm -hmm. of it's it's a movie yeah. right but all the like inner workings behind all that on both sides they take both sides of that oh okay yeah it's just real. it's well done it's like That's two and a half hours long though really yeah it's yeah. a long movie it's gonna be one of those solos my wife won't watch war movies she just doesn't i love like a good war movie though i do too you an action guy too like um, adventures and all that Avengers, totally, yeah. I'm a Marvel geek. I'm, I love all the Marvel movies. Yeah, yeah. They do so. When you look at that span of Marvel movies, <laughs> all right, now you're getting me into something cool. This is like Star, oh, well, beer? This is like we Star talking? Wars. This is like Star Wars talk. Hey, you want to talk oh, Star okay. Wars, I'll go Star Wars. But Marvel, you look at what they started. They had always tried to do a Marvel movie. They yep. did a Captain America movie in the 70s. They did a Thor movies in the 70s. They, they, were, they did a Fantastic Four movie. They were always campy and goofy because... It just didn't look good. good. It didn't look like anything you'd seen in the comic books. It always looked, the uniforms, the costumes look retarded. It looked like a costume. It did. It looked like somebody had a really nice Halloween costume. And then you take John Favreau, takes Iron Man. Iron Man 1 was the first in the series. Oh, such a good movie, man. Great movie. Oh, my God, I love that. And, Still my favorite. And I think John, I think John Favreau is a <laughs> phenomenal director. You look at what he's done. In his career, from going from an actor to being a director to being a producer, it, it's it's he's a great kind of lifetime. You watch him and you go, "That's a guy who's done something with his life." Yeah, right? yeah, he's, yeah. and he's always looking for improvements, um, and he seems pretty down to earth, but smart as a smart as a whip, right? The guy just knows his stuff. But he took Iron Man and he said, "I'm going to take this property. I'm, here's what we're going to do with it. We're going to it's going to be the foundation piece." I don't think he ever thought like Avengers. He probably knew, okay, let's stage this and maybe we'll do an Avengers down the road. But he made it a standalone movie that was great to Is watch, it? exciting to watch. He made it look real, like you believe this guy was in a costume, an iron costume. Yeah, yeah. And get shot at and whatnot. And <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like the first uh, Transformers you could fly through the sky and whatnot. You do you like you like you like Transformers? The movies, the the ones with the like live action movies or the cartoon. No, the n the newer ones. I like the first few. So, <clears throat> the first few I like because when you were watching in the movie theater, mm -hmm. when one of them transformed, it was so oh mechanically detailed. Oh my god, it was like ching, 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 everything ching, was like ching, ching, ching. again. You're just watching you're like this is amazing. Yep. And the same thing with Iron Man when he was putting on the suit, it was just so. And then Iron Man 2 and everything else come on, and you're like, okay, he's Iron Man. Yeah. But it was so different yeah. at the time. They gave you the details that, that you could build on. Yeah, so yeah you didn't, that's a good so point. So the next movie, you never had to go through that detail again. Oh, like that's a knew. good point. Like oh, you yeah, knew, right. right? Oh, let's get out of the way in the first movie. Yep. Like I remember, so Transformers was me, for me, was big when I was back in the 80s and the cartoon came out. You ever watch yeah, Transformers, yeah. the movie? I went the it's a cartoon, cartoon movie. Cartoon movie. Oh, okay. No, I don't. Holy cow! What a great movie! And I, I went. <laughs> it was funny. I went with my buddies. We were. I was probably a freshman in college when it came out, about that age. <laughs> and uh, I went. I remember going into the movie theater with my two buddies. We were just ready to go. Pat Norton and Scott Carpenter were with me. Okay. We went in the movie theater. We were the oldest kids in the place. <laughs> Everybody else was like ten years old. And, and how we old were, were you? Just how old fascinated. Are you? I was probably freshman in college. I think it was. Oh, okay. 
or senior in high school, something like that. Isn't that in that like 86, 87 time frame the movie came out? Mm-hmm. So I remember later in life, um, I was in college a couple of years later, it came out. I was working at a Palmer video. Right, you remember Palmer Video? No, is that like a block? But like it was a, like a blockbuster video, but right. it was like a local video okay. shop. Sure, um, and we would get all the movies that would come out on VHS at the time. We'd get all the movie posters and the stand ups and stuff. Oh, okay. Well, Transformers came out, and we had this big. It was like it was like it had Optimus to be seven Prime. feet seven feet tall, four feet wide of the movie poster from the Transformers movie. And I'm like, that's mine. And I remember asking the manager, I was like, when that thing comes down, can I take it? She's like, oh yeah. She's like, you want any more? And you go in the back, there's like a stack like this oh. of all the movie posters they would get with the VHS tapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I had a, I had movie posters. My college dorm was just like surrounded. Every square inch of the wall was like movie posters. Now, did you have a specific genre you liked or if they just look cool? I liked if they looked cool, but it was a lot of stuff like, uh, like Transformers, Lost Boys. Oh, that's a oh, that's a classic. I had that movie poster. Yeah, that movie holds up still today, man. Yeah, you can that's watch that saying. thing today. Yeah, it gets a little goofy. Yeah. I think it gets a little goofy at the end when the guy turns into the like master vampire and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think it holds up to that. I, I'm I'm into stupid stuff like Goonies. You know, I love Goonies the, is a classic. I love Goonies. Uh, I think it's a great movie. Um, so I haven't, I haven't like watched that. that in I man, that'd been, be twenty years since I watched forever. that movie. Forever, but that yeah, that's that's a movie that's like forty years old now. Yeah, that was a good movie. I thought it was. See, so yeah, that's it's stuff like that. I I I like those movies nowadays. Movies, they're good, but you know, I've, yeah. the, the, I think growing up watching movies when you never saw something before and you saw it for the first time, you're like whoa, that's impressive. That's I've never seen. That's like Star Wars. The first time you see Star Wars, oh yeah, I'd never seen anything like that before. My imagination went crazy. Oh yeah, but then you get Battlestar Galactica, then you get Star Trek, and then you get well, it every desensitizes other. You, it right? does, right? Now I'll tell you, we went and watched um, months ago Star uh, Star Wars, mm-hmm. Return of the Jedi, right? Return of the Jedi. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> the voice uh, from beyond. Yes. Yeah. Uh, at a NJ Pack, which is uh, New Jersey mm-hmm. Performing Arts Center. The orchestral thing or the movie? Both. Oh, so they me. played the movie on mm-hmm. a big screen. Mm-hmm. Underneath it, the orchestra was doing the music. Yeah, I was hoping my wife would surprise me with tickets to that. She knows that how much was, of a fan I am. Dude, I, if, you ever get a, if you ever get a chance... To give you an idea, we stayed through all the credits. Yeah. <laughs> because the orchestra's yeah. playing. Yeah, yeah. But when it opened, when the 20th century, dun, 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 the <laughs> orchestra's like, bam, you're like, whoa, that's live music. <laughs> it, it was it was great How do they experience. How sync it up? How do they sync it up like that? Because are I've, you hearing the sound for the movie as well? No. Well, you hear, they they get rid of the music. Oh, they pull, and it's just the audio tracks of the actors. And yeah, and then play, they... The, they play the whole movie score? The whole movie score oh, as yeah. it's going. I think they took a intermission. Oh, my God. I that think. must have been amazing. It was so cool. Wow. Then we were going to do uh, Jurassic Park. That's another good movie. How cool would that be? You know what was good about that one? When that one came out, it was a mix of practical effects and CGI, right? So, right, right. So when they had the close-up dinosaurs, it was like real puppets. But when they broke back for like Tyrannosaurus Rex or guys running, it was C- CGI. CGI. It's the blend of those two that you get lost in. And you're like, how cool I is feel that? Like I'm staring at that. <laughs> yeah. That's another one of those movies. Like I've never seen this before. Right, you right. Know? And then like done you said, so well. You've probably seen it, but it's not done as well as right. Like you go back to the old Godzilla movies and stuff. You're like, come on, dude. This, <sighs> you this can is see not... the zi- I can see the zipper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you see the zipper. Yeah. <laughs> The guy's walking around. The hands are flopping around. The yeah, tail's right. like, you know, right. it's like, okay, it's got a rubber suit. I get but, it. But, uh, but I those always, hold up really well. I for remember. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you no, off. That's but right. Remember, remember, like um, it was like a Wednesday holiday special. They play Godzilla movies all day on TV. I like remember channel, those. I think yeah, it was yeah. Channel Nine or Channel Eleven. It was the days when they would play like Flash Gordon and yeah, all those. It remember would be them? like the marathon. It would be like the movie <laughs> marathon. It's and all Dune. Godzilla today. Oh God, that's unwatchable. <laughs> they're redoing that movie oh they better they better make it like iron man and all that oh like god. super they entertaining. talk so much in that movie it's like good god please stop talking i love sci-fi like growing up i loved sci-fi stuff like that yeah but that would come on like holidays and 
you know, so I'd sit and try to watch it. Sure. I tried to watch it not too long ago. I'm like, oh, this, oh, I can't. No. You, can't you can't, right? Can't. You can't. What about Stargate? Stargate holds up. The original Star- Stargate? Stargate, Stargate. Stargate's Stargate. Uh, the one with the big circle. Yo, yeah, oh, that's it. spins. It's got the guy Kurt with Russell the gl- in it. Kurt yeah, and Russell. The, and, and, the, and the nerd with the glasses. Yeah, he, play, got- he does Ultron's voice. And back to, here's a little throwback to, <laughs> to Marvel. He does the voice of uh, uh, Spencer, not Spencer. Um, oh, I just had his name. He was in the. Uh, he was in like some. He was in a bunch of '80s movies. Yeah, yeah. He was. I, I remember him in like his hair really and his glasses and shows. stuff. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That, anyway, was, that yeah, holds up. He was in. I, I think, enjoyed that. Yeah, that holds up. How about um, Contact? Is that the one with um, Stace? Um, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Jodie no, Foster. Jodie Foster. Foster. Good, we got one. Thank God. <laughs> we're going God back and forth. There. Remember that movie? Oh, what's, his what's, what's his name? What's his name? Okay, move on. We don't have that one. I don't have that one. Yeah, Jodie Did Foster. You? So, so odd movie, odd movie. The we, the ending is really weird when she starts talking and she keeps repeating the phrase. Yeah, yeah. And she's yeah. kind of bouncing around. And yeah, stuff. where the video feed and the kept, sphere. The, yeah. They don't have no video feed, but the timeline, like yeah, the video is running, but drops, there's no. It, the, I remember right. She drops through a thing and then she comes at the bottom. Yeah. For everybody else, it was instantaneous, but for her, her it was for whatever you whatever length right. of time it was. Yeah. 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 No, that's kind of cool. I don't know if it holds up. I'm not a big Jodie Foster fan. Nah, me neither. Yeah, I just no. don't. I see Jodie, I'm like, I got to change the channel. <laughs> so I don't know. She's a little full of herself, too, when she talks. But I don't know. I'm not one to judge. How about... <laughs> She's full of herself, but I'm not judging. It's cool. How about... Uh, what's the other... Oh, a Knives Out. Did you see that? Mm-mm. Knives Out? Knives Out. It's. I think it's a... It's a mystery, like who done it. Okay, but I think it's a spin on Clue. All right, Clue is a good movie. I never saw it. Oh, it's a good movie. It's a good one. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Yeah. It's it's goofy and campy. Like it's yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. Clue. Come yeah. on, it's a game. <laughs> say, it's a game board. How do you it's make a that a serious movie? thing? <laughs> you really you can't. You make it a little goofy, but I, I think the back to the Marvel stuff. The Marvel twenty five movies, wasn't it? It's like twenty something movies from Iron really? Man one all the way through. That's 25 movies? Yeah. They have done? 10 years. It's 10 years of movies. Holy shit. I didn't even- They were putting out like three a year at one point. I mean, it was just Holy like- Holy cow. Bye, you get a new- nothing but a cash register, I oh imagine. Oh my God. You got to imagine. <laughs> they, they um, what they bought? They bought Marvel for $4 billion. Oh, they made that they back bought, in the first movie. They bought Star Wars for $4 billion. They bought two, and now they're looking at buying DC. They want to buy up DC. They just want to buy them never, all. Those can't just. They don't hold up with like a DC Marvel. never holds up. I'm I. You know my kid. My kid is a big DC fan. He just swears by DC like I swear by Marvel. Mm. I think Marvel just does a better job of making characters that are relatable. Mm. That you can, you know, someone they sense humor a bit human. They have flaws. Right, I think that's right. what makes Marvel different than DC. The characters are flawed. They're and not DC, perfect. And DC, they're more perfect. They're always eh, perfect. It's a good way of looking. I never thought they're of it that way. They're always perfect. They're, right? Their gods are super powered. You know, Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman. You yeah, look at yeah. these, these characters. Batman's probably the most flawed character of them. No, I, but I, he's not really flawed because he's a billionaire rich guy. If he has a problem, he just goes builds a ship or right, adds right. something to his belt buckle. You and know, then and takes care of it. Takes care of it. Now, what's gone. that? The I think it was Justice League where they're all in it together yeah. and they fought Superman. In a, that the was beginning, yeah, the Justice League, yeah, because yeah. they'd killed they'd killed them off in Superman versus Batman, right? Um, I watch the movies. I just you know, so do, yeah, I, I you know I watch all those, but I thought the Flash was amazing in that movie. Yeah, he's getting his own movie. Is he really? Yeah, he is that character. That guy's that he, young he's kid, a good right? Character. He was in um, he was in that spinoff Harry Potter movie. He was um, oh the. Uh, the guy with the beast, Fantastic Beast. Fantastic Beast. Yeah. He was in those that are all right. He I was enjoyed the, those. He was the kid. He was the kid with like the demon inside of him. Yeah. That, that would come yeah. out and stuff. Anyway, he was, he's, he's a really good actor. I think he's kind of funny. As the Flash, he's he's a really I thought great, he was great. He's the comedy sidekick in the Justice League, right? Absolutely. Yeah, he's, he's like, man, I'm I'm always hungry. I, I have a <laughs> I have high metabolism. <laughs> you know, and he's like... <laughs> This but is I, he's like you said he's always goofy. He's goofy. Yeah. I, you got to have some of that in a kind of like Spider Man. Look at the other the characters. Spider-Man. Look at the other characters. They're also serious. They're always serious. They're, they never crack character. Right, right. They're always. He's kind of funny. He's kind of a funny guy. So did you like uh, Captain America? Or is it? Well, there's is that the lady. 
No, that's Wonder Woman. No, 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 on the Marvel side. Yeah, Captain America. He's uh, the shield. With the no, shield. no, I know him. Uh, what? Not Captain America? Huh? Captain Marvel. Captain oh, Marvel. Oh, Captain Marvel. Mm. Mm. <laughs> we moving on? Mm. <laughs> It's not that I hated it. I think it. I think Samuel Jackson did a great job in that movie. He's always good, man, with a cat. Dude, that guy. <laughs> that guy. You could put him in anything. He's made a career of. I think he said it great a few years back. He said, "I'm never turning down a role." I said, "Did he got, say that?" Yeah, he's like, "You got to be stupid to turn down a role. You're an actor. Get on the screen See? and make something out of it." All right. Speaking of Samuel Jackson, yeah, Hitman's Bodyguard. Hitman's Bodyguard. That's with. Oh, that's him and Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. yeah. Did you see that? I saw part of it. I didn't watch the whole that, that thing. That was a good movie. Dude. It is good. They're funny together. Yeah, I they're, think they're good. Funny. They're a good mix. Yeah. And that's where I think my... Ryan Reynolds is a good character. He's I a good character. Actor. I've he's, always, I've he always liked that guy. He plays the same stupid character every time. <laughs> same jokes. He, he'll be Daredevil. He'll play that movie. He did, uh, he did like a National Lampoon movie the early same. in his career. Same. He's always the same guy. Yep. Yep. But that it works. Just, that works. It works great for Daredevil. He's a great Daredevil. I love. I liked him, Daredevil. Fantastic, both yep, movies. Yep. Really good stuff. Um, but that movie has my, one of my favorite scenes in it, where Samuel Jackson comes crashing through the thing, and it's a whole setup. Okay. And uh, he's in a car, and he's like, "Are you ready, TikTok motherfucker? Let's go!" <laughs> <laughs> but that's what he does all the time, right? But before that, Ryan Reynolds is sitting there, like, goes to this. Um, what do you call it? a kiosk where a guy's like serving coffees and stuff? Yeah, yeah. And in the background, Samuel Jackson's like destroying the whole street and getting beat up and all that. And he's just standing there and he's just bitching about Samuel Jackson. Right. And he's like, this guy single handedly ruined the phrase motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you could put you could put Samuel Jackson in anything and, and he for that moment, you know, the whole movie will suck. But when Samuel L. Jackson's oh, on screen, it's like, wow, it's amazing. this is amazing. Yeah. This you, guy's phenomenal. Do you ever hear him uh, narrate the kid's book? Mm. Go to fuck to sleep. <laughs> Shut up, motherfucker. Go to sleep. <laughs> that's, that's the name of the... Go, go to go the fuck to sleep. Yeah, that's the name of it. And now, he's like, you know hey, I'm going to look this up when I get home. Is this, absolutely. Is this, I got to fact check you on this no, one? Is no, that what I got to do? No, uh, dude, 100%. Because... I bought the audio book just right. to listen to, and it's only like five minutes long. Okay. But it's amazing, dude. Is it really? God, he can do anything, like he you can. said. I think he can. I think That's he, why I brought that you up. Know, he just has a he, I, he has a different attitude about approaching projects. It's like, you know, he just, when he said, I'll never turn down a role because I'm an, act, I'm an actor. My job is to act. Right. And, and you look at him through his career. He'll take like a five-minute part. He'll get on screen for a couple minutes, yep. and he'll just... He did it. What was his first? He did that Spike Lee movie um, about the pizza joint in the city. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I never saw it. But he's in that. He plays the radio DJ. So he's like, remember Warriors? Oh, yeah. yeah. The Warriors movie, there was always that radio DJ. He was always talking, and you saw our lips moving and stuff yep, like yep. that. He was kind of that character in this in this movie, the Spike Lee movie, and he'd be just kind of narrating and talking about what's going on. Through the right, movie, right. and he, he's like, it's just a, that's a great character. He just had that little bit part, and he turned it into a career. He turned it. Oh, he, he was, he's, yeah, he was phenomenal. He could narrate anything. He could. He's got a great voice. He's oh, like Pulp uh, Fiction. Morgan Freeman. <laughs> oh, Morgan, Morgan Freeman. Morgan yeah. Freeman is another one with a great voice. <laughs> well, anytime you read something, you see that meme. Uh, happy birthday for Morgan Freeman, and on the bottom it says, "I know you read that in my voice." <laughs> <I know> you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know Samuel L. Jackson's got his own fragrance. Oh God, here we go. Motherfucker. <laughs> I should I, got I knew I was walking into that one. I knew I, was I got the meme, into that dude. One. It's real. There's I, a meme. God. I saw it on the internet. It's gotta be real. It's gotta be real. Yep. Has to be. If it's Everything on the, on the internet, internet's it's... real. Everything on the internet's real. But he's 100%. he does a great job um you know in, in the Marvel movies. He plays just a consistent he's just Well, I like how he's got a little comedy com little comedy yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah. And then he's seriously, you know, he's gotta be the whole When he has to be serious, right, he's serious. But then, the thing with the cat, dude. I wish they'd bring that cat back. Oh, that They're was hilarious. flirting. I knew that. I so I knew oh. I had read the comic books. Oh, see, I never so read it. As soon as I saw comic. the cat and I saw it on screen, I'm like, oh, it's a flirkin. I and never knew go, that. Yeah. And then the guy goes, What are you doing with that? Don't point that at me. That's a that's a flirkin. It's like, <laughs> don't point that at me. That was great. When uh 
when we were watching, I'm like, okay, I don't know what's going on here, but apparently something's going to happen with the cat. Yeah, because I didn't, I never read the comics. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it was it was always it was always in there the flurkin. Speaking uh, cameos, popped in my head. Uh, were you an X Men fan? Do you like the X Men movies? So they got a little ridiculous after a while. I love the comic books. When I was a young kid, I collected all the. I had every X Men through the eighties. The comic books. Who's your favorite like character? That. Colossus. Colossus. The, the guy, the Russian guy, turns into the metal. So oh, oh, okay. He was, yeah, in, yeah. he was in Deadpool. Uh, Deadpool, yeah. So I, Ryan I, Reynolds was amazing. <laughs> but that. that's my favorite character. That's my favorite X-Men character. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know why. I think Wolverine's probably second. You that's, know? My, yeah, that's my favorite but, you character. Know, it, that's why they're in the movies, because they're everybody's favorite characters. I'm not like yeah, the only person point. who likes Colossus or Wolverine. Yeah, right, you know, right. Built a whole franchise around these guys. Cause, but, you know, for me... Hugh Jackman is not Wolverine. If you look at if you know Wolverine from oh, okay. movies, Wolverine's like a five foot four stocky guy. Like a like a fire hydrant. Yeah. He's short and he's like a Wolverine. I mean he's big yeah, and yeah. goes into these rage modes. And well and Hugh Jackman just didn't get me there. I, I oh, okay. get it. And you know, I think um Captain Picard was probably the best choice for oh, you know, Picard, Professor dude. X. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, he, yeah, he did a good job. He just yeah. looked like the guy. Yeah. Um I wasn't a big fan of Cyclops. I think they did Storm wrong early on. Yeah, Storm um, wasn't a big one to me. Cyclops. I think they was, just miscast the whole thing early on. They're going to reboot it now that uh, Disney has it. Oh, okay. They're going to reboot it and incorporate it into the Marvel universe. And I know that uh, uh, Hugh Jackman, quite a while ago, said, "You know what? I'm. Do- I can't keep this." He can't keep the, the physique up. The physique and, up. That's a it's big a work, reason. It's a workout. Man. Yeah. Gotta, yeah. Can you imagine? Those bodies to... don't come naturally. Whew. You know, you look at super. Uh, that was always the hard part, I think, about bringing comic book superheroes to a, a movie screen. It's because in the comic book, they're bigger than life. That, right. And they're supposed to be. Right. And when you see them in the comic book standing next to a normal person, they're huge. Like Thor is supposed to be this massive dude. Hulk is supposed to be huge beyond big yeah. yeah but they they kind of i think they made him big but you know it's they he's not as big as he should be he should be a lot bigger than that right right it's the same thing with fantastic four you could never do the thing because you always had to put him in a costume it was a guy in a costume right until right, they, right until the latest the rock guy there, the yeah the rock thing. guy the big right. orange guy right yeah, yeah and he's a great character i, I think the thing th- is a great character i think his i think the when he was in human form you couldn't have got a better guy to play that I think he was great. He did right? well. We, yeah, he did well. That's a guy but from the Shield, he went, right? He he switched over, and you're looking at this thing going. It's, it's it, the proportions aren't right. He, he looks too much like a rock character. Like in the comic book, he's he's big, but he's smooth. He's he's ah. I didn't the, see. In the okay, movie, they made him like rockier. Right. If that makes sense. Like a bunch of rocks put together. Yeah. But in the comic book, he was just big. He's just big and smooth. I mean, he's like he's big. You put him next to the Hulk, he looks like the Hulk, but orange with cracks in his skin. Oh, okay. Okay. And that's, you know, that's, so you, you, every time I saw a movie with the thing in it, I'm like, that's not the thing that I know. That's oh, not, okay. It's not the character. Yeah, but they got to d- dress it up for the new movies, right? The, yeah. They gotta, but now they're going to, now they're going to do a new movie. They're going to digitize them. They're going to yeah, they, now right, they know yeah, how to do yeah, it. Yeah, they could do yeah. it. I mean, they'll make them look like the real. Well, it's thing. like uh, Skull Island. Did you watch that? With King Kong. I did. That's another Samuel L. Jackson movie. Oh shit! That's right. He's, yeah, he's in that. Dude. He's yeah. great in that movie. No, he's a guy a, that goes fucking nuts. Yeah, that's a great movie, <laughs> dude. Nuts. That movie was done really well. And now uh, Captain America's in there. The lady. That's the lady's ca- in there, and Andrew Sedakis is that his name? Who's that character? That's Sedegas. No, that's the com- comedian. There's this motion capture guy. He does all. The, he did all the motion capture for Gollum in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Okay. He did all the Planet of the Apes motion capture. Man, they started good. They went downhill fast. They man. did, but yeah. then they all did. If you look yeah, at the original so. Planet of the Apes, come on. By the end of it, it was like Planet of the Apes, like in <laughs> modern buildings and shit. <laughs> yeah. like, what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> it's like. But the, you look at the original movie; it just it was perfect for the early seventies, the makeup oh, yeah. and everything. No, yeah. But then they tried the. Remember they did the reboot with Johnny Wahlberg, Planet of the Apes. Johnny Wahlberg. Oh, yep, yep. And yep, they, they yep. had him in the spaceship, and they they did this. Nah, carry. It was so nah, bad. That nah. was. It just. I don't know why all these reboots. Like I don't. I don't need to see another Batman origin movie. I don't need uh, to see another Spider Man origin movie. No, I don't. 
you know, I, I just got tired of it after a while. It's like, stop rebooting. Do something creative and new. Do something new. That's something the biggest new. thing. Do something new. Now, you know, one movie I tend to bring up a lot that holds up probably the best. Okay. The original Alien. Oh, that's a classic. From like, I don't even know the year. It was 70, 78 or something yeah. like that, right? Wasn't my favorite Alien movie. But man, I watched it last year. Mm-hmm. I was like, holy shit, this still holds up. This is crazy. It's it's crazy how good those movies You look at 2001 A Space Odyssey. Oh, you that was a at, classic. I love that they, one too. You look at it, you go, look what they had to work with. Yep, they, there's yep. limited special effects, limited capabilities, but they made it so realistic. You yeah. look at it and go, wow, man, that's... That's amazing. That And nowadays, everything's... I watch uh, this, CGI and... Yeah. I, we watched this movie... Um, Angela and I, Angela made me watch it. <laughs> she did. I, I blame her. It was a Brad Pitt um, movie. He's he's a space character, and his his dad is like a um, abandoned like Earth. He was he was sent out like sixteen years ago to find and colonize something in uh, some faraway a- a- land. It's like area or something. Yeah, ad area, area or, something. or something. Yeah. Oh. Oh, God, it was brutal, brutal to watch. It's like, I don't think Brad Pitt did a bad job as as an actor. It's just that they just supplemented the storyline with a bunch of wide space shots. Yeah, stars and a ship. And it's like, come on, man. It's like, come on, you guys can do better. That's where he like, he... And he produced that movie too. Did he really? Yeah. I didn't know that. He, is that his character wouldn't... Or couldn't like raise his heart rate, or he had super control of his heart rate, or something, so he didn't panic. He never panicked. Is that yeah, what yeah, it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He never, okay. he never I remember panicked. That, yeah, he, yeah, his stress, stress level stayed the same forever. He just stayed calm forever. Yeah, because and then it, later on in the movie, you know, he breaks and he yeah, yeah of course. Of spoiler, spoiler alert. alert. <laughs> Forty How about years the, from now, if you're going to watch the movie and you yeah. listen to this podcast, how about the one with uh, Matthew McConaughey where the Earth is dying? And then they come to him because I know the one. God, what the hell is it? Dude, name? we're going to do this all night, aren't we? Yeah, Remember that movie? <laughs> Remember that one? Remember that one? People that are was actually, to this podcast ago. Those two fools. Have no idea. They need to have some of their fact a, checking. They need, a, they need a Google. That's what these yeah, guys yeah, need yeah. is a Google. That was actually, I enjoyed that. It was long, but I enjoyed it. I can't remember the name of it. And then is they that the see, one with like the three dimensional world? Like he, where gets he ends in the up end. in. Yeah. yeah, he winds up in. Yeah, I know what you're talking. Yep. about. Yep. That's actually that's a really great storyline. Yep. Because it's like I enjoyed that it one. ties the beginning of the movie, like where the dust on the shelf was moving. Yep. Remember that? Yep. To what happens later in the movie, and he's trying to communicate. <laughs> he's trying to communicate back. He's yep. trying to. Yeah. Yep. God, that was. And yeah, the, that was like the three legged metal thing was walking in the water. Yeah, that was the Marines. Yeah, that yeah. was. A, they were going to say they were, we're going to send the Marines with you, and it was that. It was that little metal three little walking yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, and then they find. Uh, I'm going. So, I'm going somewhere with this one. Okay. They find uh, the guy that played uh, Jason Bourne, uh, Matt, Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Yeah. They find him in like. Yeah, they find him in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. But he's playing. It's it's for me. He's playing the same characters he play he was playing in the Martian. Martian. That's where I was <laughs> going to go. The same like, dude. <laughs> it's the same dude, right? Yeah. They mix those they two movies him. together. Yeah, it's like <laughs> they, they found, found him. him. Did you? Matt see, Damon's like, hey, I got this character. I'm just going to give it to you. I already did it once in another movie. But here you, gonna, here you just go. Here you write me a check for just this much. Give me a check for a couple hundred <laughs> thousand. We're good. <laughs> I tell you what, the movie Martian was good. Mm-hmm. The book. Listen to it on Audible. Really? Oh, amazing! I, liked, I thought the movie. I thought the movie was great. The I movie's the movie great. Was well done. The book blows it away. Wow! That, but that isn't that always the case. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I think it's always say. the case. People, people, you know, they. Oh, you, I, you like Lord of the Rings? You got to read the book. Well, of course, yeah, you got to read the book. Yeah. Shit, I ain't got all that time to read a <laughs> book that's that thick. Oh, you like that movie? You should read War and Peace. That's a really yeah, good yeah, movie. exactly. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, I got, you I got, have to read the whole Encyclope- Encyclopedia Britannica before you watch this movie. Huh? But it's yeah. hard. I, I don't think um, I don't think people read no enough. I love to read. I love the feeling of a book opening up. But the way I consume, I consume information more audibly. Is that a word? So if you hear a book, you if hear I it. listen to a book, I'll consume that information. I'm the same way. If I read. 
I just don't consume information that way. I couldn't read like a book they would give you to te- for school yeah. and yeah. read it. I'd have to read it a couple times probably yeah. to, to, to let it absorb. Yeah. I, I did that. So in my in my professional career, there were always these books that were coming out, and they'd always say, "Hey, Chuck, you got to read these books. These are really going to help you develop as a manager, as a yep. salesman, and all that other." I don't have the time. Yep. So I joined this executive book club, and it was what they would do is they would take the whole book, and on an audio tape, they would compress it down to about twenty tape. minutes, twenty tape. to twenty five minutes on CD. Okay. Oh, okay. Like you now it. you're moving in the timeline. Yeah. You sorry, said yeah. tape CD. No, yeah, I, well. <laughs> They would they would put it. You get a CD every month, and it would have three executive books that the be, the top leaders in the world were reading okay. at that time, and they they'd summarize it down for you. They'd read just the highlights to you. So you'd, I'd be in the car, and I had that thirty to forty minute Jersey commute to get to work. Put it in, pop Good. that sucker in. I'd get one going to work. I'd do one coming home. Yep, yep. And then I'd listen to them for a few times. So I got a stack of these CDs in my closet at home. From that, from those years, right, right. I've probably got like six years of collection of just all these books on tape. Well, books you know, they, uh, they, uh, it's called the Great Courses now. Okay, same thing. Pick a pick any subject you can ever imagine, and they have it on Great Courses. Yeah, I'm listening to one about uh, the history of the Vikings. That's cool. Twenty two hours long. <sighs> I just I piece. You know, well, I did. That, I have four I did or that five on YouTube. I I got fascinated for some reason. I wanted to go back and go through Napoleon. And okay. it, was, it was probably like a month and a half ago. I don't know what it was. I was like, oh, Napoleon. Oh, so you I went, went to YouTube. The, went down that rabbit hole, huh? Yeah, well, I went to YouTube and I, I said, you know, videos about Napoleon history, right? And there's like a four-part series, like, you know, it's like half hour each. And it, it went through his whole life. But I was more interested in the battle. So it took through, you took through these mappings of how the battles happened all the way up to Waterloo, right? With yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And it was kind of, you know, for me, it was, it scratched that itch just enough that I didn't have to sit down and read a book for hours. Right, right. Just like, yep. That's what I do with these. Pop and, on a YouTube video and watch it. And I'm like, all right, I, f- I feel better now. I'm good. I yep. know what I need to know. And, and then I forgot it. it like a week later. But. Yeah, like you said, though, it scratches that itch, right? Right. They have... Uh, uh, I don't know the guy's name. The podcast is called Hardcore History. Okay. And I listen, I'm listening to one about China now, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but uh, Genghis Khan, I know I'm pronouncing mm-hmm. it wrong. But no, no, you got it. But I think it's pronounced like Genghis. Genghis. No, nope, it's not Genghis. It's got to be Genghis. Nope. That's how I, everybody knows Genghis nope. Khan. Yeah, but that's how we pronounce it. Oh. But. Originally, That's not how it's pronounced? No, it's like Genghis Khan or something. Genghis? Something I'm pronouncing it wrong. But it's not Genghis Khan. I think we're both totally wrong. I think it's going to be like, ching Kong. Hey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and we're going to be but, like, wow, I feel like a fool now. Cause <laughs> but that that is absolutely fascinating to listen to what he did and that society did to implement so much "Quote unquote" technology back then that was their mm-hmm. technology, right? We look at but technology. There are, there are people like that throughout history. You look at absolutely Alexander the Great. Yep. You look at Genghis Khan. You look like uh, what? What was the other one? The uh, Mong- Mongols. Um, yeah, Geng- Mongols. Yeah, it was that was Genghis, Genghis Khan. Khan. Um, that that just dominated for their entire lifetime. They they controlled the earth. Yep. Romans. You look yep. at the Roman Empire. Yep. You, know, you look at what they did. You look at the the Vikings. Oh, the Vikings did. were the Germanics in Germanics. The Germanic tribes they took over the Germans. Oh, okay. controlled everything. Okay. Um, at one point, they had, they had just taken over all of Europe. At one point, okay, yeah. But that yeah was I don't always, know that I history. I think that was always the history of they. It was just like trade hands, like somebody would fight and. Well, just like now, so, I mean, with anything, they fill a void, right? So this say gang, I I'm not going to have the timeline right, right. But China comes in, or China says, no, stay here. Genghis Khan says, no, I'm taking over China. Mm-hmm. They move over there. Now there's a void. Somebody else moves in. That yeah. creates a void. Because back then, it would take you decades to, to do get. that. So by the time you're like five years down the road, behind you, somebody's coming up and already taken back. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, I control all this. Well, do you really? Do you I, really? I love history, though. I, so I, could, I appreciate I love that it. Kind of I've, stuff. I've always had an appreciation for it. I've got a better retention for it now as I get older. Right, right. right. When I was in school, I took high, you know history classes and things like that, and and I would I would learn. I'd get fascinated. I was a big fan of like the twenties. I was a 
you know, when I went through eighth grade, I think it was, it got me really excited about the gangsters. We studied the oh, 20s and the I gangsters. Love that. Oh, yeah, and of course. You'd go through the whole roaring 20s, the depression and all that stuff. And that That's 100 years ago, just 100 years yeah. ago, right? A lifetime. Then you roll back and you start thinking, okay, well, what came before that? And then you start looking at the, the, the rise of America. You look at European expansion. You look at the fights between France and England over the years. There was that whole yep. you know, thousand-year history there. You look, then you go back, you go to the Romans, you go to the Greeks, you go to the Egyptians. There's just so much history out there. You start to learn about it. And I, I was watching something this morning, of all things. I like to, when I wake up in the morning, I pop on YouTube. And I like to look at my top 10 videos. And I pick, <laughs> I pick one that's like 15 minutes long. So while I'm getting ready in the morning, you just I'm, listen to it I'm or watch it. To it or watch it, whatever. Right. I got, I'm in the shower. I got this thing playing. It kind of gets my mind going in the morning, right? Just oh, that's some, fun. some kind of random thing. I look through my top 10 videos and <clears> it's like, because it, YouTube will always do kind of like a Google search for you. Right. If you watch particular videos, Next time you go into YouTube, it's going to suggest some videos for you. Like, right, hey, right, hey, if right, you watch sure. that, you're going to like this. So I'll pick one. This morning was all about the Sphinx, the Egyptian Sphinx, about where was it from, the head on it's not the original head. Right. There and why this, is it where it is? Right. Other. Exactly. And it yeah. was like, oh, the, the, the Sphinx is a lot older than, than the pyramids. The pyramids. And, yeah. It was there before that and stuff. And, and some pharaoh came along and decided he wanted to put his head on the Sphinx so it lasted forever. <laughs> so he carved it down. That's why the head's disproportionate to the, to body. the body. Um, and then Napoleon shot the nose off. That was one of the... Is that how they lost the nose? That's what they say, but it's it's just not... <clears throat> that's a it's actually not true. It didn't happen. Oh, Napoleon didn't. No, he never shot it. Off. No, okay. No, you're just trying it. to. You're just trying to. But that was like one of those random. You read facts. it on the. You, re, you read it on the it internet. Was on the internet, so I believed it to be true until they tell you. <laughs> no, that really didn't happen. Oh, okay. It All never right. Happened. You so, are you like just kick ass at trivia night? No, I'm awful. You know what? So I, all the, you can't retain it. No. See, I'm the same way. I don't retain anything. No, I mean, I'm, I, as I get older, I realize I retain less and less. I used to. That could be a blessing and a curse, right? No, if I need it, it's there. I've learned, yeah. you know, you fill your you fill your head with information, so when you need it, it's there. Like you'll subconsciously pull it up. Yeah, you, yeah. you know, you if you are a student of learning, when when you have to make decisions, you become you become better at strategy, right? So business is a strategy. It's just you're constantly trying to figure out what's sure. the next what's the next move, right? It's like chess game. Any any game. I, I grew up as a gamer, so it's always you got to think ahead, right. plan where you're going because if you don't, you're just going to get caught in a situation you can't get out of. It's the same thing as I got into business. I realized it's always you. You got to be two three years ahead of where you are today, or else you're you're never going to get there. Right, right. right you're right. just taking it as it comes. You can't take anything as it comes. You got to plan ahead. So I found I found knowledge, information, strategy, history math it, it's kind of filled my mind with the ability to kind of plan ahead a little bit that's cool and it's and it's fun as i get older i don't retain as much but if i need information like if i got to make a decision i've it's amazing i get there i get there pretty quick quick yeah i get there pretty it's quick. um you just pile it up right so it's there yeah. when you need it subconscious yeah yeah subconscious kicks in and then you it's amazing how the the brain has always been fascinating. That this little lump of and flesh, well, little lump of flesh in my my head inside a skull can do all that. Can do everything, that right? I, and we're only using what twenty percent. That's what they, Is that say. What they say. It's it's not even twenty percent. It's a smaller percent. But it's the fact that this thing, it, it's like <clears> a it's it's like a living organism. It's like it's it's something living inside of you that help that you're just you're the a, I'm just the exo skeleton right. so to speak sure. of this and it's running thing in, in my head you know why we they sit well they say you know mm -hmm. why we only have 20 around 20 percent mm -hmm. we don't have the energy to do any more our bodies can't produce enough energy to run more than 20 percent of our brain get out of here is that yeah. really what it is mm -hmm. I didn't you know, know the numbers might be skewed no, I, I but the basic the basic theory is there right? the basic theory is our bodies can't burn calories and cr create enough energy to run more than 20 percent huh. That's interesting. Right. And then like we wouldn't know what's that's every fundamental if that's true, that's every that's behind every fundamental 
mechanical decision that's made. Engines go faster, the better fuel. Rockets go further, the better the fuel. Sure. The, everything. Fly planes, jet engines, everything. Anything. What you're running it The on. better fuel, the better. Where do you run? Yeah. Yeah. Competitive bodybuilding. Better fuel in the body. <laughs> Needle. <laughs> <laughs> can always edge it along, you know. There's always, always a little bit of. Yeah, well, that's true. You know, put a little nitrous in there, right? I got to tell you, I, I I loved cars as a kid. I I real I used I was a grease monkey. I loved getting in the car. I loved rebuilding right, engines. Right. And I wish my kids had. Kids nowadays don't have that kind of passion, right? When we were kids, you need to fix a car. You got in there and fixed a car. You right, need to change right. your oil. You go change your oil. You need to change a head gasket. You pull the head gasket. You pull yep, the head off. Yep. Get a new gasket in. And you, you just don't do that nowadays with cars. You just yeah, but that's yeah, but that's a. I think that's a lot. We have to do with manufacturing, right? They're more they, comp cars are more complicated now, right? And sure. they build them like that because they don't want you fixing it. They want to pay you. They yeah. want you to go to the Toyota mechanic so they can. But it's the brain. My kid told me this the other day. Um, no, it wasn't my kid. It was it was Bobby, one of the guys that works for me. He um, he said he somebody brought in he brought in his car to get fog lights put in into his new truck. He bought a new truck. Okay. Want to put the fog lights in. Like he, brand new truck, like 2020? Yeah. He okay. just bought it, but he, he wanted to like, he likes to add things to sure. it. So he put running boards on it. He put some window things on it, but the lights were like a mechanical thing, right? So he had to bring it in because they had to put it into the fuse box. And when they put it in the fuse box, they had to rewire and reprogram. Jesus. So they had to reprogram this computer to know that the fog lights were there so that he could tell. It was like he had to, pro he had to reprogram the brain of the car to Just know kind of that, and then it, and then his fog lights are awesome. So back in the day, you put the fog lights on, you run the wire up through the dashboard, and you put you a little put toggle a switch. Toggle switch. <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I did. Off, on, I did that's what I did till the cops pulled me over. And uh, they can't, you can't put your fog lights behind your girl, kid. Oh really? Oh yeah, I, uh, I had a Camaro. A '77 Camaro was my first car. So you know, it had that that kind of yep yep V. You know, the grill grill. Yeah, I put my fog lights right behind there. Why couldn't you put them behind the grill? You can't have anything behind the grill can't have any lights behind the grill that's a cop thing really yep <gasps> oh because it looks like a cop car looks like a cop car you can't put uh, can't put lights behind the grill so I, I get pulled over they'd say you got to get rid of those lights here's no your shit. warning yeah i had to pull them out huh yeah see my sucked. first my i thought they looked awesome because i'd click those suckers on and the whole <laughs> yeah light up i great. thought my first thought was so, okay you get in a Something happens, it goes through the radiator, and now you're fucked with the radiator. No. But I didn't even think about it. it looks like a cop car. It's like a cop car, because that's where they put their lights. That's yep. where they used to put their lights under the, under yep. the grills. Damn. Yeah, I used to get in, yeah, I got in trouble for a lot of things. Back yeah, then. yeah, well, but that's that was a whole fun. That was, that was all, you know, you, you build your car up. You, you know, I took my 305 out. I put a 350 in nice. it. I put a four-barrel Holly on it. I mean, it was like, put a fin on the back, jacked the back up with air shock, put 60 wides on the back. <laughs> I mean, I really, I rebuilt this thing, and yeah, but it's, I did all the work. Yeah, when you walk out and get in it, mm -hmm. or you're sitting in the light, and somebody's like, "Hey, man, nice car." You're like, hey, man, I built it. it nobody ever said that because I no, no, because I had primered. Like, I wanted to paint the car, oh. so I primered the car, but I never got around to painting it. So it was just a primered car. I'd, see, well, see, then you got to take it to the next level. Of that is make it a rat ride. Yeah, well. I was pretty close. I was pretty. <laughs> I was going to do, you know. Eventually, I was. I, I kept telling myself, you know what? I'm going to go to Earl Shive. I'm going to get the ninety nine dollar car painting. Oh, okay. I'm just going to have the guy spray the car down. And I and I never, never got did. to it. No, I went to college and then. Yeah, I, but the whole the whole idea of hot rod, as long as it ran like a it, some bitch, it who cares what fast. it looked like? Who cared what it looked like? It was, I remember I was coming home from Seton Hall, where I went to college. It was like one in the morning. I was coming down two eighty. Because I had to take you, you take you get on two eighty, come to eighty, and I lived mm -hmm. in Morristown, and uh, I got pulled over by the cops, and they said, "Do you know how fast you were going?" I said, um, "Yeah, I think I was doing like fifty five, sixty, <laughs> at a zero were, or was, at a one. He said you were doing a hundred and five on you were doing one hundred five. He said you had a pen, and I said, "Well, I thought I was doing closer to maybe sixty. So he said, he said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to write you up for, I'm going to write you up for 65. Um, so you'll have to pay points and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. It wound up costing me back then points. You remember the points? Yeah. System? Yeah. Don't I, they do them now? They still do I points? No, I, I don't think, I don't, I don't know. I haven't gotten a ticket in a long time. Like I, I got to like 11 points. <laughs> Knock on like, wood, right? One more point. I lose my license. Yeah. I remember those days. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was like right on the verge. I, I, I have a heavy foot. I love to drive fast. I love fast cars. Nice. So when I got that 11th point, I was like, and I'm paying 
you know, in well, not, your insurance was always about points too. I remember insurance those days. Was points, but then you had it was like three thousand dollars a year in points I had to pay. It was huge. I mean, it was just got to the point where like I'm not blowing my money. I'm not gonna waste my money on speeding, yeah, and shit yeah. like that. So I kind of toned it down a little bit. But I've it worked. It to a point, you know, yeah. to a point. I never, I haven't gotten a ticket. I think I've got, I got a speeding ticket in Hackettstown. I was going down the gauntlet. You know, the gauntlet is right no, over here. No. It's the, it's the mountain between. Mount Olive and Hackettstown. Okay. You go down the winding road. And you okay. can't help but go like 50. The car just gravity takes you. <laughs> but then Washington Township's like right in the middle. Oh, and they just- They put a cop car right there and they'll pull you over for doing like 47 and a 45 and they'll give you a ticket because the, you get mad and you go, fucking Hackettstown just gave me another ticket for speeding on 46 and I wasn't going that fast. But it's not Hackettstown. It's Jefferson. They, they got a cop right there in the middle of the road, and they know if they sit there, they're just going to get just somebody eventually all yeah. day long, yeah. all day long. They still do? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. can see it's, that. It's, it's like a- We had places it's like, like a that. thing. Yeah, we had places like that growing up, too. You just knew they just sat there because- there was It's a, a downward, it's a downslope. Yeah. You can't, you got to ride your brake all the way down the mountain. You know, you really do. You got to just keep pumping and pumping right, and pumping right. until, you, until you get down to the bottom. And they'll just get you. Every, you get that idiot that goes down and just gets caught. We were going to actually put our brewery. Mike and I was looking at properties in, in, in Hackettstown. We were looking at, a, at like two or three locations in Hackettstown. That were, would have been really nice locations for the brewery. And I got two tickets. I got I got two tickets. I got one for coming down the gauntlet. And the other was on... Um, oh, River, before... Okay, River. so you're looking for a spot for the... Yeah, it was before we were open. Okay, it was that right. spot between 2014. It was like... I think it was 2015 before we had locked into this place. And uh, <clears throat> I got two tickets. I called Mike up after the second ticket. I said, we're going nowhere near Hackettstown. <laughs> I can't... I said, I, I can't afford I can't, this. Yeah. I said, I got two tickets in a month. I said, I, for, for barely speeding. I mean, I was maybe five miles an hour over the speed limit, and they, they tagged me. Yeah, yeah. I just, I don't know what it was. I'm like, yeah, we're not, this is an omen. I told him, I said, this is an omen. We should get out. Yeah, don't be in Hackettstown. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're in Hackettstown by name, but we're in Mount Olive proper. Yeah, because like when people ask about you, it's mm. Hackettstown. Yeah. You know, or yeah. Bud Lake. Bud Lake. You know, yeah, they Bud throw Lake, the, yeah. Bud Lake is usually a lot easier for people. To kind yeah, of absorb. yeah. Because I'll get the, I'll say Hackettstown, they're like, huh? No? And I go, Bud Lake, they're like, oh, I know where that is. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got that. <laughs> yeah, I got that. Well, shit, dude. Thanks, man. Thanks ah, for having me. One. I got to mention Patrice Schaefer. I told her I would. Oh, really? Yeah. You're name dropping? The, I am. You know why? She listens to every one of your podcasts. She sent me a nice message. She is. She's fantastic. She remembers you from the chamber days. And yep. She's, yep. she's we a always good person. You, you want to sit down with somebody, have a good conversation. She's a good person to talk to. She's got, a, right. she's got a lot of history there. Um and she's my she's my vice president on the chamber right now. So I'm the oh, president, yeah? she's the vice president. Oh, okay, cool. Great person. And uh she was I was talking to her tonight before you and I were on, like half hour before. When you pulled up on the door, yeah. She was on the phone with me. Oh, nice. And I said, nice. Yeah, Walt's coming over, we're gonna do like a, a second podcast together. She said, Oh yeah, I I listen to all of it. She says, I go out for a walk and I put them on. And I that's just That's what she said. I'm yeah, that's awesome. And, listening and and I thought that was great. So I told her, I said, I said, at some point, listen to the podcast. So this is where I name drop at the end. So Not she had to listen to the entire. Yeah, see, well done, sir. <laughs> well done. Well done. She, no, I was, the whole thing to listen. She's like, he said he'd listen to my, he said he said he, my name. He said, he said He's it. in there listening to the whole thing. Oh, there's there my name. Is, there it is. Right at the end. See ya. <laughs> she's fantastic. No, I always, I always got along with it. No, she dropped me a nice message on uh, YouTube. Oh, nice. And then uh, on one of my stories, on some social media platform she responded okay saying that uh she did him on a walk so i thought that was really great i nice. responded back to her but hell man i'll reach out to her see if she wants to come on she's good she, yeah. she'll be a good chat she'll yeah she's chat. we always ran the hours away talking so yeah. she's always yeah. interesting to talk to yeah so You're cool sure oh this is great man I'm thanks glad man you came back out again man Honestly. yeah yeah i uh Got a lot of feedback from our first episode. Yeah, was it all bad? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry about well, that. Man, that's why I'm out I here apologize. the second time. <laughs> <laughs> Got to redo. Hey, what were you we just talking about? We're uh, doing a reco like a redo from like the movies. Yeah, you know the first one. You know, uh, you know. So yeah, my come out. You know, here. it's kind of cool. I, I, it's like I said in the first one. Every time you and I tend to get together, we don't get together a lot. But right. when we get together, it's a good conversation. It's good talk, and yep. you know, I, I think it built up from that first time we met over at the studio. That did was, you come? What studio did you come over? Uh, when you were over, we in, had the uh, chamber event over at your place. 
Yeah, uh, the, over in um, uh, we had the. I brought like the three kegs of beer. Over. Oh yeah, yeah. That, Man, that's the first time I met you. Yeah, that was our first time we met. Wow, I thought I met you before that. Mm -mm, that oh shit, that was our first time meeting. We might have met in passing, you know, chamber events stuff like sure, that. Sure, sure. But, but that was like the first night we really got to talk and get to know each other. And, oh, cool. and Spend some time together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That worked out well. I'm gonna one of the summer tour stops is over my old. Ah, there you thing go. there with my uh, old partner and her mm -hmm. husband. All right, all they right. got a recording studio over there, so I'm going to go record with them over there. And then you're going to sing. You do some singing. You don't want me to sing. Do oh, okay. So it's not recorded. Like doing this guy. Do, doing this. Yeah, yeah. Recorded. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> I, I didn't say, want wow. somebody. <laughs> what you're cutting an album? I didn't. Uh, look at this. <laughs> you're branching. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Me. He's uh, uh, her husband. David is a super talented. Nice. audio engineer okay and he's a musician and all that too yeah. but uh they built out a really nice recording studio oh, and all that cool. so we're gonna sit and do that and nice. as you know the place is eclectic so we won't have a lot of uh you won't have a lot of air conditioning going on and off and things no, there's coming. no air conditioning in that place remember that <laughs> i do <laughs> yeah it got a little that warm I remember. Yeah. got cold as hell too yeah. in, the, in the winter but yeah, yeah it's a it's a you, you know uh unique place oh it's great i so, love it it's great character there a yeah. lot of character there so that's cool all right buddy till next time huh? thanks man all right bud. cheers as always i appreciate you listening and hope you had as much fun as chuck and i did he's just a great dude and if you're ever out in the west part of jersey swing into jersey girl brewery he is a great person to sit down and have a conversation with and they can serve you during these crazy times and more information about his place uh have a link in the show notes check it out and while you're buzzing around Google and on the internet, more information on the summer tour uh, on my Instagram account, WKT Podcast, and my website, WaltzKitchenTable.com. And of course, YouTube. Jump over there, subscribe under my smiling mug, and like and share helps me out a ton. Look out for some great video content coming. And uh, Liv Rishi, can't forget these guys, awesome CBD product. Use a code word table. Let them know I sent you and uh, get a great discount. Until next time, much love. Mm -hmm.